Good evening. I'm calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, November 22nd, 2021. This is Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes, thank you. John Hurd? Yes. Len Diggins? Yes. Eric Hellman? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes. And Board Administrator Ashley Marr is participating remotely. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act signed into law on June 16th, 2021, that extends certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. The act includes an extension until April 1, 2022, of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is referenced with agenda materials on the town's website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, is being recorded, and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. All participants are advised that people may be listening who, don't, who do not provide comment, and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus agenda platform. Finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. We have a number of important items on the agenda. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. I'll now turn to item two, Acceptance of funds received from various entities. Douglas Heim, Town Council. Attorney Heim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as has been our practice throughout this past year, uh, when uh, donations or uh, certain types of gifts are being uh, provided to the town and its various departments, um, we put these on the agenda to make sure that the select board finds the uh, donors acceptable and any particular restrictions or conditions placed on those gifts acceptable. In this case, you have a relatively straightforward um, slate in front of you. Uh, and with that, I would be happy to answer any questions or take a motion uh, to accept these gifts. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney Heim. I'll start with the board. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would definitely like to uh, move approval as well as um, thank the two Charitable donations. I know one is from um, the Cummings Park Group, which um, funds various charities across the state, as well as the um, Ocean State Job Lot Charitable Foundation. Um, it's the first time I'm seeing that, and if they've done it before, I apologize. I, I missed it, but I'm very thankful for that. So happy to move approval. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Hurd. I'll second that. And again, echo Mrs. Mahan's thanks for the donations. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Yes, I'm happy to support that. I mean, um, no amount is too small. I mean, from $870 to $35,000, you know, um, it's all very welcome. And I have to say the Ocean State Job Log uh, logo is just the cutest thing. It, uh, so, so well done on that. It, so thanks. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helmer. Thank you. And uh, I'm pleased that these are going to the Arlington Youth Counseling Center. They do such really good work for some of our most vulnerable residents. And uh, so we appreciate the donation to support that as well. Great. Thank you, Mr. Helmer. Yeah, and I'm grateful on behalf of the town as well to the Cummings Foundation to, and to Ocean State Job Lot. So on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, uh, Attorney Hahn. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. 
Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you. Uh, item three, holiday stroll in Arlington Heights on December 11th, 2021. Arlington Heights Community Association, Janet O'Riordan. Uh, is Ms. O'Riordan with us tonight? Yep, I've just promoted her to panelist. I'm mute. Hello, can you hear me? Good, yep, good evening, Ms. O'Riordan. Um, Hi. Hi, okay, thank I'll you. Video, sorry, so you can see me. Oh, there we are. Okay, great. Oh, yeah, oh, thank yes. you for um, <laughs> joining us tonight. And it, okay, it, we, we received the proposal, but if you could tell us a little bit about it. Okay, um, so actually, so um, um, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have another um, window um, painting in the Heights. Remember, um, I think most of you have probably seen the Halloween. So we're gonna uh, follow up with a, a winter theme window painting. So there'll be 53 windows painted. And so we thought it might be nice um, to have sort of a holiday stroll to bring people out to the Heights community to view the windows and then also to shop and dine in the Heights. Um, so so to, to add and make it a little bit more interesting, we, we thought we would add a few sort of family fun activities to draw people. Um, so um, we, I think I mentioned here a, a couple of games. Um, Ali Cotter and I went over to the bus depot and we figured that that was the, the safest place to just have a couple of um, outdoor games for families. Um, I have a cornhole board from the Schwann Mill that we're bor borrowing and um, I ordered a little ring toss. They're just small little games that we're going to put on on the cement brick walk, not on the the the, the I mean the cement um, sidewalk, not the brick sidewalk. So it's right in front of the depot, so they won't even um, interfere with pedestrians walking by in the brick walk. Um, so it's more than enough space for the um, for the games. Um, I'll be there with some volunteers, and we'll just have people just you know participate in the games for a couple of hours, and then we've also organized some other activities. Activities, but they're mainly indoor activities. Um, in fact, at the Wonder Yoga, they're going to host a, a kids' craft for a couple of hours with a, a local art teacher and artist. And then we're going to, um, we just recently just signed up Margaret Moody. She's going to give a puppet show for some kids inside at 4.15 for a half hour. And then um, also, since we've met, um, uh, Norm McLeod has offered from ACMI to hold his tree lighting um, on the same day. He normally has it on a Friday, but he's going to have it at five o'clock, sort of the end of our stroll. So the stroll will go from two to five instead of two to four. Um, so, um, so yeah, so it, we're starting small with some sort of a, a stroll. I think years ago there was a stroll in the Heights. And so hopefully we can make this maybe a, an annual tradition um, and um, just bring some more people from the town, all parts of the town to the Heights and, and discover all the nice businesses and restaurants. So, um, so that's, and oh, I mentioned music. We have not been able yet to find music. I guess the musicians that were used for the haiku, um, they're just not available or some musicians just said it's just gonna to be too cold to perform outdoors. Um, we're still waiting to hear from one more musician perhaps um, that could be located inside reparations, um, but, we're still waiting to hear. So if we do find a musician, it would be non-amplified music and it would probably be indoors at reparations, um, um, maybe someone on the sidewalk, but I, I'm not sure at this point, you know, so. And, no, that's uh, great. Okay. Thank you, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you if you wanted to add anything else further, but I, I just note that there's also a rain date of December 12th. If, yes, if, yes, if, the if following day. Okay, good, yes. all right. I'll turn to the board, Mr. Hurd. Uh, happy to move approval and I look forward to it. It's good okay, thanks. this year to start seeing events outside <laughs> and done safely and done in a uh, in a smart manner given the current climate, but it is good to see people's faces outside of the Zoom meetings. So yeah. happy yeah. to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Dickens. Um happy to second that. If I'd been thinking ahead more, I would have come up with a haiku next year though uh, uh and definitely get the kids over to acmi because that's a, that's that's fun you know they really do a good job you know, for the kids so so um, encourage people to go there mm -hmm. great thank you mr diggins mr helmet thank you uh, of course i'll support this and thanks for for all the effort to 
to do that and to get residents out in their neighborhood to support the businesses. Um, and thanks to Allie Carter once again uh, for her work and looking out for all the business districts in town. She, she is amazing. I will, will say that this has come out. She holds meetings every month. I'm not from, I don't know if all of you know that every month and it's brought people like me representing the Schwa Mill and other residents and business owners. And um, she's really been a pivotal for all of these, these, these things happening. When you bring people together, things happen. And that's just what's happening now because of Ali. So just want to thank her. And we've also gotten a lot of support from the Chamber of Commerce and the Arlington um, Commission for Arts and Culture. All right. So. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you. Uh, no further comments. Great. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my colleagues have said it all. Thank you to Ms. O'Riordan and your association and Ms. Carter and others. Um, I know that I think the town sounded in the heights with their um, holiday decorating also. Um, with the new Heights pub opening up, um, I'm, I'm really pleased that um, Ms. O'Riordan and her group, other neighbors, planning department are, um, as they always do, focusing on what we see as the three business districts um, on Mass Ave. So thank you again and looking forward to see you on the 11th. And if there's a rain, I don't want to say the S word, but <laughs> I'm with Mo, um, but if not, oh. I'm with <laughs> so, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Yeah, and I'm happy to support this as well and um, happy to receive this proposal and echo the comments of my colleagues. So on a motion by Mr. Hurd to approve the Heights Holiday Stroll on December 11th, seconded by Mr. Diggins, Attorney Hine. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmer. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Great. Yes. Great. Thank you, Mr. Raiden. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. See you on the 11th. Okay. okay great. Okay. Goodbye. Uh, Thank you. Good night. Uh, okay. Item four, PJ Library, Hanukkah Lan Lantern Walk, Stephanie Marlin Curiel, Commission for Arts and Culture. I believe she's with us tonight. Okay, great. Good evening. Here I am. <laughs> oh, Hi. Great. great. Thank you for joining us. Um, I, I must apologize for having missed the previously scheduled meeting in which I was on the agenda and just the evening took off and I just completely, completely slipped my mind. So I, I apologize, but I'm No here problem. And, and we saw that the date was, we still had a meeting between the uh, goodness, proposed yes. event. So, so we're <laughs> able to move it here. So happy to do that. Uh, why don't you um, tell us a little bit about the event and, and, and what's being proposed and then I'll turn it to the board. Okay. So the event is for young families, families with children, approximately three to eight years old. It begins at Kickstand Cafe, where we assemble simple Hanukkah lanterns like this. They're cup, cup, cupcake boxes. And then we just put some fairy lights and some stickers. And, um, and there will be a musician there. And first we'll need to start with a Havdalah prayer, which is just uh, to uh, sanctify the end of the day of rest, Shabbat. And then we can move on with the, with the Hanukkah celebrations. Um, so we have Emily Shea's permission, who is the kickstand owner to use the parking lot. There will also be a public art piece there during the, for the duration of this event from 3.30 to 5.30, we will have um, a, a large lantern on a flatbed truck um, with all sorts of uh, colored glass. And it was decorated with children, uh, by, with, uh, by children using scratch art. And, and I think there's a sound component as well where they talk about their inner strength. The children talk about their inner strength. So this is a lantern you can actually enter into. Um, and there, there is do, a docent gonna be there from J Arts. This is from, from uh, Jewish Arts Collaborative that they're bringing this lantern and it's by artist to, Tova Speeder. In any case, we will then take our walk, our lantern walk around Arlington Center um, with the strolling musician and we plan to um, cross either at Medford Street or at Franklin Street. It depends a little bit on the size of the group. <clears throat> and, um, but now, 
now we do have 30 families registered so far for this. We have been in um, consultation with the Arlington Police Department. And so they are going to be ready with officers to help us cross the streets safely and direct, you know, direct traffic. And um, so we'll come around to the other side, possibly if we go across at Franklin, we'll go through Broadway Plaza. Maybe we'll stop there and sing a song um, sort of as a group, keep going, go into Whittemore Park, where I imagine we'll, you know, walk that the new um, walkway around the circular part and, and the musician will probably stay in the middle in the park and do a little movement with them, like, you know, spin the dreidel, things like that. So I'll get to spin around and move a little bit. Um, and at least at that point, I hope we'll all be able to hear the music. And then we will return to Kickstand Cafe and Emily Shea is selling us some uh, hot chocolate and we are permitted to bring donuts, which are traditional Hanukkah um, to the premises. Great, thank you very much. I, I thank, thank you for, for um, explaining that and I will now turn to the board, uh, Mr. Diggins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, I'll be happy to um, move uh, approval of this request. I mean, and I'm glad that uh, we did get Stephanie's um, on this curio, um, this Marlon Curio's um, explanation of it because it's 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 I know it's exciting. It sounds like a lot of fun. And and and, um, yeah. and you being from the east, we we're gonna have to do something in the east. I mean, they're doing something in the heights. They're doing something in the, in the center. We're gonna have to do something in the east at some point, huh? Yeah. Anyway. Well, happy to do that. I just want to uh, point out though, I am from the Commission for Arts and Culture, but this event is being done by the JCC Greater Boston, which is my day job. So this is the JCC event. Okay. But right. I'm their regional coordinator. Well, well, thanks for pointing that out because me, I guess you were kind of reading my mind. I was associating it with um, ACAC, but, right. but hey, you know, um, we're all just one big community here. That's just kind of <laughs> we have these somewhat arbitrary lines um, between us. So, but thanks for doing this. Thanks for organizing it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmut. Thank you. I happily second the motion. Good luck with your event. Sounds Thank wonderful. You. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Mr. Helmut. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Very happy to support this, and I appreciate um, Ms. Marlon Curiel's day job, um, <laughs> JCC. And I, I thought I saw some other reference um, to another group um, in your PJ middle. Library is um, that's a Jewish book club that we we use that branding on our events for young children because they're books for young children. So that we administer through the JCC. So, okay. but it's not and really I a separate group. Okay, so it's merged it's, together. It's, it's PJ Library, J Arts Collaborative, and uh, and JCC Greater Boston. Great, and I noticed, um, as the chairman highlighted with the previous event, that you do have a rain date, and I forgot to ask this of um, the previous event. I'm assuming that your families who have signed up and are others, you've sort of either established um, if there is a need for a rain date, where they can get that information, or um, oh, absolutely. Well, first of all, we would email them all if they if they're if we were canceling in due to rain but we also have a Facebook group and we encourage them to we always say in case of inclement weather check the Facebook group or contact Metro North at jccgb.org which is my address. Thank you so much and thank you Mr. Chairman. Thank you Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Thank you for coming in and happy to support this. It looks like a really fun event and I look forward to it. So good luck. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurden. I support it All as well. All are welcome with your kids, by the way. All are welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy to support this as well and, and echo the statements of my colleagues. So on a motion by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Helmuth, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Unanimous vote. Great. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Okay, next will be item five, which is the only item on the consent agenda. Minutes of meeting, November 8th, 2021. Mr. Helmuth. Move approval. Great. Mrs. Mahan. Okay, so welcome back. We're sorry about that. They, we're having some Zoom difficulties tonight and uh, this Zoom account was double booked. So that uh, is what caused us to have the blackout where we're back now. And um, 
we were in the middle of the consent agenda and we had received a motion from Mr. Helmuth. And um, I was just about to turn or had turned to Mrs. Mahan uh, when we lost the connection. So, and if, if Attorney Hyman, I think Attorney Hyman was trying to work out some challenges. If he could mute himself. So the select board um, meeting is back on. I don't know um, if we can mute uh, that, that account because we're getting some feedback on that. There we go, perfect. Okay, uh, Mrs. Mahan, it is to you now on the consent agenda, agenda minutes of the November 8th, 2021 meeting. Second, Mr. Hamlet's motion. Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Hurd? No comments. Mr. Diggins? No comments. Great, and I don't have any comments either. Um, I'll, I'll run the roll until we hear back from uh, Attorney Himes. So on a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Helmuth. We'd be afraid to make a motion from now on, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Okay, Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. And I am yes as well. So it's a unanimous vote. Uh, moving on to item number six, which is a public hearing, um, which is of Mr. Tierney, the Director of Assessments, and Mr. Greeley, the Chair of the Board of Assessors. Um, we have two items, a vote on the MWRA debt shift and a discussion and vote on property tax classification tax rate. Good evening, Mr. Tierney. And good evening. Um, and Mary O'Connor from the Board of Assessors is with us tonight. Good evening, Ms. O'Connor. Good evening. Great. So the um, yeah, whoever wants to start, um, go go right ahead. Is anybody else joining you from the Board of Assessors? Or yeah, ma'am, Mr. Greeley is here. He just stepped out for a second, so he'll be back in a minute. So I can okay. go ahead and uh, let him speak after if that's okay. That's fine. Hey, good evening, everybody. Uh, before I start, I'd just like to thank uh, the Board of Assessors, Mary O'Connor, Wynn Stanley, Robert Greeley, and our newest member, William Zagata, for all their help throughout the year. Um, as most of you know, Mr. Zagata is new to our board, and he's been a welcome addition so far. Uh, and I'd also like to give a shout out to my staff of Dana Mann, Mary McMakin, and Jenny O'Rourke for all the work they do throughout the year. So for already, I'll begin. First page, uh, to calculate the FY 22, 2022 levy limit. Uh, we have the 2021 levy limit of 126,776,920. Add two and a half percent to that of $3,169,423. New growth this year, $933,510. To get to the FY 2022, Levy limit of $130,879,853. Um, Mr. Tenney, can I just interrupt you for one second? Sure. I don't, is there, are there, and you had sent us this package, it's part of our agenda. I don't know, Mr. Chapter, if you have it or if there's any way we can screen share just to, for people following along at home, um, just, just to uh, follow the presentation here. Okay, sure. Perfect. Okay. Okay, we're good. Yeah. So, Perfect. if you don't mind just reviewing those those figures again, that'd be great. Sure. Uh, to calculate the FY 2022 levy limit of 126, we use a FY 2021 levy limit of 126 million 776,920. Add two and a half percent of three million one hundred sixty nine four hundred twenty three dollars. At 2022 new growth of $933,510 to give us the FY 2022 levy limit of $130,879,853. So for FY 22, we are adding the school debt exclusion of $10,276,792. Also adding 2022 water and sewer debt of $1,845,727 to give us a maximum to be raised of $143,002,372. We are not, the town is raising for the FY22, $142,948,226 divided by all the taxable value in town 
times a thousand will give us our proposed tax rate of eleven dollars and forty two cents. Next page, shifting the tax rate. This page. Uh, Yeah, we're getting a little feedback there. Yeah. Maybe that's better. So shifting the tax rate, this gives us our uh, percentage, share percentage of all the classes of property in town. Um, for the residential, we have 94.3154%, commercial 4.1036%, Industrial 0.2034% and personal property 1.3776%. We go to page four. We just go down one more item. Thank you. This page just piggybacks off the, the, the shift we have in our uh, minimum residential factor, a CIP, CIP share of the levy and a CIP maximum share. Now this page gives, um, shows if we, would, if we were to shift um, the tax rate, from a single rate to a split rate. As you can see, if we shifted 5%, um, commercial industrial properties would increase $286, while the residential would see a savings of $17.21. Uh, if you go out, scroll all the way down to the bottom, uh, if we did shift up to the maximum, the commercial industrial personal property would see an increase of $2,855 and the residential open space would see a decrease of $172.08. Next page is if, we, if the town were to adopt the residential exemption, our base rate tax rate proposed for, the year for FY22 is $11.42. If we shifted 20%, that tax rate would increase to $14.62. If we shifted 15%, it would be $13.84. 10 10%, $13.14, 5%, $12.51. The residential exemption is only ado adopted in a handful of communities, uh, including Boston, Cambridge, Chelsea, Brookline, uh, mostly to do with towns that have a lot of apartments and summer homes. Uh, the break-even point where you would not see a decrease or increase would be $911,000, and approximately 17% of the homes in Arlington would shoulder the burden of this exemption. This next page is just the uh, tax rates for all the years previous. Uh, you can see at the, uh, the last column, uh, our FY22 is 1142. This next page is what we call the LA-4. It gives the parcel count for each class of property, as well as the value for all those particular properties in that class. And this total, the totals are at the bottom. This page is our, what we call the LA-13. Uh, we, this is where we enter our growth. Also, our abatements from the prior year. Um, we have we had 24 abatements in the residential class last year, uh, and our growth is in the lower right-hand column of $933,000, $933,510. 
This page uh, compares our FY21 values to our FY22 values and also tells you how many parcels, um, the difference in parcels over year to year. So if you want to take a minute to look everything over on that. Okay. Next page just shows a pie chart breaking down uh, where the um, the debt exclusion and the MWRI, MWRA shift uh, went to. Uh, this page breaks down where each uh, from the the proposed tax rate of eleven forty two, so. For the levy base, it was ten dollars and thirteen cents. That two and a half percent was twenty-five cents. Uh, growth accounted for seven seven cents. The water and sewer debt exclusion fifteen cents, and the school debt exclusion accounted for eighty-two cents on the tax rate. The column below that, um, it's just a mirror of the figures we've gone over already. Uh, just go if I would point out at the bottom. The average single family value in town is now $844,657. And the average uh, taxes on a single family this year will be $9,646. Uh, this last graph uh, just shows our neighboring towns. Um, but as I just said, Arlington's uh, single family Tax bill this year will be 9,646. Uh, Belmont and Winchester do not have their information yet. Uh, I will fill that in as soon as they give it to me. And Lexington's uh, single family tax bill this year on average is $16,553. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cheney. Um, did Mr. Greeley want to add anything uh, as part of the presentation or I don't know if Ms. O'Connor is gonna make the presentation. Any additional comments? I think Mr. Greeley would like to speak. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he might be, whoever's speaking, everybody else has to turn off their microphone if, they, if they're nearby or mute their microphone. Yep. Yeah. Paul, which account is Bob uh, signed in under so I can promote him to speak? Oh, there he I'm going to let Bob sit in my seat and he can do it from here. What's the question? They just want to know if you have anything to say or a statement. Oh, do I have a lot to say? Good evening, Mr. Greeley. Can you turn it up so I can hear it? <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Greeley. Good evening. How is we all? Good, how are you? No complaints. Good. No complaints. Um, I have a few things that I'd like to discuss with you. And the other members of the board. Um, as you know, this is a very bittersweet night for me. It's three years ago Friday that Kevin passed away. I have not been to, I was going to say, the office upstairs since that day that he died. You may not know, but I am in the process of selling my house. I need to downsize. I need flat living. And unfortunately, those requirements aren't met by the town of Arlington. On the other hand, therefore, I will not seek re-election for assessor in the spring of 2022. 
Gordon Jameson may be downstairs already. I'm not sure. Number three, I have worked for every town manager or with every town manager since the Town Manager Act came in in 1952. The first job I had with this town, I was paid 75 cents an hour to shovel stairs at the schools starting at midnight when you would be picked up by the public works people. Fortunately, I've done a little bit better than that since then. I've had, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> I've had the benefit of working, okay, um, as I just said, with every town manager, and I think there is only one other person left, and that person being Marie Kropelka. Number four, I have had the benefit of working with great assessors, great department heads, and especially the assessors, Bud O'Connell, Phil Waterman, Jim, Jim Doherty, Mary Wynn Stanley, my great friend, Kevin Feely, and recently appointed Billy Zagata. Also, we would have been lost without our current director, excuse me, director of assessments, Paul Chaney. I want you all to know, I have never had a bad day in almost 39, 39 years in this office. I enjoyed every minute of it. I found it fulfilling. And I found that I was able to learn that most people, when you're dealing with a municipality, they want to ask a question and have it answered they may find that that answer is not gonna be what they want. But what is important is that we listen. The greatest ability in my opinion in almost 39 years of municipal work is the ability to listen. I for one did not learn that from day one. I can assure you, it took me quite, Stephen, do not laugh. It, <laughs> <laughs> it took me quite a while to learn that. Len, fortunately, you haven't met me, so you're lucky that way. <laughs> the biggest thing that I'm going to miss are the people. Worked with great people. Again, I enjoyed every minute of it. And I'd like to believe, I'd like to believe professionally as I leave and specific date, I cannot say at this point in time, it will be when my house is actually sold. Um, <coughs> however, it's, it's a town that I believe offers anything and everything from cradle to grave. I've always believed that it's a great town from the standpoint of tolerance. I believe it has always been an inclusive town. <coughs> Excuse me. And I can assure you that I, again, at the risk of being repetitious, have enjoyed every minute of it. So in the end, I would like to offer two pieces of advice. One, get rid of the water and sewer debt exclusion off of the income tax, off of the real estate tax bill which I have espoused since 1995. And last but not least, one of the things that I've admired most, and I learned it from my father, and I learned it from Kevin, who I believe is was maybe the greatest selectman the town ever had. He was as compassionate, generous, kind as anybody I've ever known. And that has nothing to do with being his brother. Obviously, he and I were not twins, as you all probably know. But by the same token, what I would really like to see is what I view as the passion for doing what is in the best interest of the town of Arlington. 
There have been many people in my 40 odd years down here that I may not have disagreed with. Names shall stay nameless, but I have had nothing but the greatest respect because their passion for the town was always in the best interests of the town. You do not find that, my opinion. You do not find that in many towns. Having been someone who I served on the Board of Assessors for 15 years in some of them. I served on the Board of Assessors in Everett. I did consulting work, Chelsea, Everett, uh, Natick, Framingham. You can't imagine how some of these communities are and how they're run versus Arlington. And I have always believed this, their people having nothing to do with political philosophy, believe that in what they're doing is for the best interest of Arlington. So in the end, that's what I'd like to see always continue. And in the very end, no one can be more thankful or appreciative or have enjoyed this town as much as I have. Thank you all and God bless you all. One last thing. I forgot I mentioned my father and my, <clears throat> my brother. I also have a daughter who sat, smile John, who sat as chairman of the Board of Selectmen Student Government Day 1990, I think it is. She is now a town meeting member and I have been trying to talk to her to get a little bit more involved. So even though for the, la for the last, and this is hard to believe, in the last 70 years, 52 of those 70 years have had a Greeley sitting in one of those chairs. And in many cases, as many of you would say, thankfully, it was not you, Bob. Again, good night. Thank you. And I will miss you all. Thank, thank you, Bob. And, and, and before you turn away, if you can stay on, on camera there, and, and, and thank you, certainly is a bittersweet night, but I want to Thank you for your friendship, uh, your candor. Um, if, uh, those of you who know Bob will know he's candid when he's tell, telling you like it is. And for your service. Some nights you didn't appreciate that, Steve. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But, but, and, and for your service to the community because you are, have been a dedicated employee, a dedicated member of the Board of Assessors and, and a resource that we have turned to uh, for expertise and, and uh, for various other things. And, and uh, I am sorry to see you leave the Board of Assessors. I know we will still stay in touch. And um, I, I really appreciate, as I said, the friendship that we've had over the years and want to wish you all the best of luck. So this is a, a public hearing for our tax rate. But I think before we do that, maybe go around if any members want to say something to Mr. Greeley, we will then return to, to uh, what we need for our vote. But I think after 39 years, you're entitled to, to uh, some additional comments, Mr. Greeley. So I, I will turn first to Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and, and thank you, Mr. Greeley. Uh, I'm gonna sort of plagiarize a little bit about, about what you said. It is bittersweet, um, not just for yourself, but for all of us who have had the opportunity um, to meet you, to work with you. Um, I. I didn't realize, I thought I knew all the Greeley history. I didn't realize 52 out of 70 years, um, there has been a Greeley um, on the then board of selectmen, now select board. Um, and I agree with you in terms of- My apologies for showing my age. Yeah, no. Um, but one of the things that I, I definitely agree with is um, one of the best lessons learned is to listen. Um, and one of the best lessons that I learned with you is um, you cut right to it. There's uh, no sugar coating. There's no, you know, adding fluff and stuff. Um, you always were a straight shooter with me, and I, I definitely appreciated that. And and first and foremost, um, respected you as as a family man, uh, husband, father, now grandfather. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you, Diane. Thank, th thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Greeley, for that very touching presentation. Certainly a uh, major force in the town for a long, long time. Um, but I, I have a question. Does this mean the herds win? I didn't hear that, John. D does this mean the herds win? 
Uh, not yet. <laughs> I'll, well, I'll help work on Kristen for you. I've uh, certainly been talking to Kristen she, since she lives down my street. I'm just obviously joking. The Greeley. Don't, don't forget my but, princess. <laughs> I know. I know. But, uh, you know, the Greeleys have had a long, long history and your service has been second to none. And we really appreciate everything that you've done for the town over the years. And you certainly be missed. So. Good luck in the future. For, for all of you listening that don't know this, John's family, there were so many of them at one time, they had their own baseball team. Now picture that for Thanksgiving dinner. All of your great uncles, et cetera, et cetera, John, grandfather. Oh, yeah. Too many to name. But thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. You. Heard. Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and uh, we haven't met. Hopefully we will and, um, at, at some point. And if not here in Arlington, then, then um, somewhere else. But hopefully when you move, you'll come back to Arlington to visit. And, uh, uh, I did meet your brother a lot and, uh, at the select board meetings when I covered them for um, ACMI. And, and as I often say, and people in this town have always made me feel welcome. And your brother was one of those people. Uh, and I agree with you about listening. Um, and, and, but also, as you said, being people um, want a response I and mean, they want a candid response. I mean, they don't necessarily um, feel that they have to, well, they want to agree with you. They do want you to side with them, but they will respect you if you Absolutely. tell them I mean, uh, uh, how you really feel about things, I mean, and, 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 and that you have a, a, a principled position. Um, doesn't mean that you're static. You can change. And uh, what Mr. Curo um, told me often about your brother was that he, he had, he respected him a lot because he evolved um, on a lot of positions, I mean, and, and he, he thought that was admirable. And, and um, I hope to uh, be able to say as much. I have my positions on things, but I try to evaluate I mean, and change when, when, um, the, um, when it merits change. And, um, and um, finally, and I don't want to um, be, I'm going to try not to sound political here, but, but um, and, you know, the fact that there isn't the kind of housing here that you need to stay here is one of the things I feel that we really need to work on. And, uh, we really do need a, a greater diversity of housing because I, I assume that you would like to stay here. And I assume a lot of other people uh, would like to stay. And, and so, so um, yes, indeed, we need more affordable housing, uh, but we just need more different kinds of housing so that people who want to stay here can, but still also that people who want to move here uh, can move here too. So, so um, good luck with everything. And, um, and, and thanks for... Uh, all that you've done for the town. Thank you. I, I do not disagree with you concerning the housing. Okay, but I'm going to give you a quick example. My house is on the market currently for $1,050,000. 45 years ago, I paid $48,000 for that house. I believe in location location, location. Then I believe in education, education, education. Then I believe in government being police, fire, and municipal services. And I challenge anyone to offer what we current, what we have, that what I feel we have in the town of Arlington, not that we can't approve, improve it. I think the bigger problem, biggest problem, Lynn, is versus other parts of the country. We are so dense around here, there is no land. I mean, it's hard to believe if you look at East Arlington, okay, that average size two family home, which today is probably a million three, okay, is on 4,500 square feet of land. They were built before the automobiles. So that in, to some extent, where we're as old as we are, we can't, do too much versus what we might really like to do. We need to go further out. Um, but I don't I don't pretend to have all the answers uh, far from it, but I, I do understand what you're saying. Um, and I think of being in the neighborhood as long as I was, okay, what I'm gonna call the average working person, okay, I do not believe could afford that neighborhood today. Okay, and when I did it, I was a teacher and a janitor before I ever um, came to work full time for the town. 
but those days, I think, unfortunately, are gone. There has to be two strong incomes to buy into this town. And, and another problem, and I can't take any credit for this, Pete, is that people have done such a good job um, running this town that people want to live here. Okay, so absolutely, maybe, they do. Maybe a victim of our own success. Okay, and, uh, so, but I hear what you say. Absolutely. Thank you very much. And hope to meet you in person. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helen. Thank you, well, Mr. Greeley. I'm glad that we had a chance to have a good long talk when I was running for this seat. Uh, look what happened. And uh, uh, it is it's a privilege and it really is humbling to think about my first year of service uh, compared to the um, exceptional legacy that you and your family have leaving and have, have made in this town of, of service. I know that when we talk, we talk about how much how much Kevin just loved people, how much he loved this town, and how doing the right thing for all the people was his priority. And that's been the case with you from everyone who knows you much better than I do and have said, and all of your family, and you will be missed. This town will not be the same. But that legacy of service will endure, and it will remain part of what makes Arlington a great place to live. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Um, and, and Mr. Green, I know we will, we will talk before, before you leave the board. So I, I'm gonna return now to the, to the public hearing and uh, thank you for your comments. And again, uh, for your friendship and for your service. Um, we will now discuss the, the tax rate in the MWAR, a debt shift. It's a public hearing, so we may have uh, people from the public who wish to be heard too. But if I could ask Mr. Chapdelaine, if we could go back to the presentation that Mr. Tierney made to page two, um, I just wanna frame what the vote or what the actions that we will be asked to, to take this evening. Stunned. He didn't say a word, the little prick. Uh, um, if, we, if we can mute the... Um, yes, Mr. Tierney, mute. Sorry. Okay, um, so if we have- Ready for me to share the screen now? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay. So if, if we look at the total to be raised, it's two votes that we have tonight. If you look in the middle of the page there, item 2C, add the fiscal 22 water and sewer debt, 1,845,727. This is actually the last year um, that we're going to be adding water and sewer debt to the real estate tax bill. That number was 5.5 million a few years ago. It was reduced to 3.6 million last year. This year, the request is 1,845,000. And, and that's basically taking debt from the water and sewer system, adding it to the real estate tax bills. It was something that was done years ago um, because of the tax deduction. One of the main reasons was the tax deduction people received for state and local property taxes as part of their income taxes, that no longer exists. So back in 2019, the board voted to incrementally remove that debt. So next year that item is gonna be zero. We do have to vote it. At the bottom of the screen, item three, um, we see a tax rate of $11.42. That is the rate that would be established if we have a single rate. And I wanna ask Ms. O'Connor, Mr. Tierney, the, we're voting on the debt shift and we're also voting on a minimum residential factor. And if you could just clarify for us, what is the minimum residential factor that we, we would be voting to have a single rate this year? Well, the assessors you typically re recommend a uh, residential factor of one. Okay, single, thank you. Single tax rate. Okay, so residential factor of one is what gets us to $11.42. Um, I will uh, now, well, actually I'll turn to the public. This is a public hearing if anybody wishes to speak on the classification issues. Mr. DeCourcy, uh, yes. may, I, may I just uh, oh, sure. point out a couple of things? Um, sure. I'm sure the uh, thanks to the board. 
I'm sure that the board, the board of selectmen has noticed that the tax rate is only increasing by eight cents and the values did not really increase uh, significantly in town this year. But I say this every year and um, uh, Mr. Tierney put together the comparison of the other communities. And I have to say that I think the people in this town get some wonderful services for the taxes that they pay here comparatively. Um, and I attribute that to the town manager, the select board, the school committee and the other departments. This is a very well run town uh, fiscally and um, as well as maintenance and the amenities that this town offers. Uh, but I thought it was important to point out because the public watching that it's an eight cent increase per thousand. Great, thank, th you. Th thank you, Ms. O'Connor for that clarification. Um, okay, is there anybody who, members of the public who wish to be heard on this issue, Mr. Chapdelaine? I don't know if there's any hands up, but just there again, are, there strictly. Are, there are no hands raised right now, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, so I will now turn to the board um, and I'll start with Mrs. Mahan. Um, th uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I assume we should start with the vote <clears throat> on the MWRA debt shift. Yes. Okay, and not just because of what happened tonight. Every time I have a vote on the debt shift, I think of my colleague, Mr. Grayley, um, who one year, Unfortunately, in the word shift, dropped a letter and said it. And then he turned and said, did I just say? He said it twice. It was a very funny moment. Um, <clears throat> I just have one question on the um, tax rate of 1142. Um, I, do I understand that 15 cents of that is also because of the MWRA assessment or let me see. Uh, the MWRA debt, or are we voting 11.42 plus 15 cents for the MWRA debt? That is part, part of the overall tax rate. It's, it's not. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the first vote would be to move approval on the MWRA debt shift. Yes. Yeah. yeah thank you, Mr. Hunt. So why don't, yeah, why don't we do that vote and we'll go back to the to the second vote. So I'll just go uh, down the line. Um, Mr. Hurd? Second. Okay. Uh, Mr. Diggins? Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. You know, I, I have so many curiosity questions, but I'm not going to ask any of them. I'll, I'll talk with folks later on. This is a great presentation, uh, Mr. Tier uh, Tierney and everyone else who um, um, worked on it. I mean, there's such a wealth of information here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmer? No comments. Okay, and I don't have any, any comments either other than to note that next year this vote won't be necessary. So um, uh, so we're on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Okay, and on the second part, I will uh, return to the same order and uh, start with Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for um, the uh, vote on property tax classification tax rate. I'd like to vote to approve a tax rate of $11.42 um, while also adapting a factor of one. And if that's not worded uh, correctly, please, someone please let me know. But I think that's the appropriate motion. Yeah, I think I, I think that's fine. They're both related there. The, the, the... Factor of one is what results in the 1142. So I think that's fine. Um, Mr. Hurd? Second. Okay, Mr. Diggins? Yes, um, I'm totally fine with that. I'll, I'll just say that during the presentation, uh, when we were looking at um, page six, and, and Mr. Tierney quoted the figures about uh, how things would change if we split the rate, I, mean, I just wanted to note that it was for per $500,000 of, of um, value. Is that correct, Mr. Tierney? Yes, that is correct. Okay, great. Um, uh, and and um, and that's it. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helmer. No comments. Okay, thank you. Um, and I don't have any comments either. So on a, a motion by Mrs. Mahan, uh, seconded by Mr. Hurd regarding the minimum residential factor and tax rate, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Helmer? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. 
Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Unanimous vote. Great. Thank you, Mr. Tierney, and, and thank you, Ms. O'Connor. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. And okay. Um, Mr. All right. Yes, um, Mr. Diggins. No, no, no problem. We, 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 well, actually, Mr. Tierney is still here, you know, so I just wanted to say thanks to um, Mr. Tierney um, for all of his um, hard work. And I hope that Jameson and the um, Fiscal Resources Task Group didn't scare you away, eh? but Burlington is gaining a good person. So, so you're not far away. So hopefully you, we can like have you come to another meeting sometime and give us a comparison or something. Sure. Thank you, you're all very welcome. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Mr. Chairman, you're you're on mute. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do it again. Thank you for for doing that. It was uh, it was brief, but I I think I can remember what I said. Item seven, Human Resource Board term to expire June thirtieth, twenty twenty four. Andrea Haas. Good evening, Ms. Haas. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, thank you for joining us tonight and for your interest to be on the Human Resource Board. If you could tell us a little bit about yourself and the, the um, and, and your interest in serving on this board. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to be considered for this position. Um, I, as has been said, uh, my name is Andrea Haas. I have lived in Arlington for about eight years. I currently serve uh, on the uh, Equal Employment Opportunity Committee. Um, with uh, the HR director as chair. Um, I've enjoyed that opportunity to uh, contribute in the town and to continue to make sure that Arlington uh, has just the most diverse and wonderful applicant pool for the many positions here in town. Um, I know that Arlington does have uh, just dedicated, dedicated staff uh, from top to bottom across the town. And I seek the opportunity to act on the HR review board so that I can continue to, so that I can assist the town in making sure that our employees have an opportunity to be heard and to be compensated appropriately within their grades um, as is required by the HR bylaws. Uh, professionally, I am a employment law attorney. Um, I've worked in that field for about 10 years. Um, I primarily worked on the plaintiff, on the plaintiff side and so I, do have an ear for uh, the employees' needs, and I think that that could be a nice balance on this board. And I would be happy to answer any questions that uh, this group might have. Great, th th thank you, Ms. Haas. And I will turn to the board, uh, starting with Mr. Hurd. Having my own mute problems here. And thank you, Ms. Haas, for your willingness to serve um, on. With many important boards, and this one is just like the rest. Um, and happy to have you in town, and, and glad you're able to step up and uh, and get involved. And I will note, I think you graduated a year before me at Suffolk Law School. So, <laughs> and I did take a number. I was a day student, but I did take a number of evening classes, so I could try to only come into Boston two days a week. But uh, <laughs> I think I crossed paths a few times in the hallway. So, thank you for serving. Great. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I can't believe Mr. Hurd skipped the Tufts reference to me. So, so <laughs> it's like he I did and, see that one too, but I didn't want to overload her. <laughs> gotcha. You know, and 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 uh, and I'm sure um, he uh, and and um, and Mrs. Corsi and Mrs. Mahan. I mean, appreciate your law, your law credentials a lot more than I do. I mean, I, I really don't know legal stuff that much, but it really is impressive. You know, and 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 thanks to me that, and this may be something that uh, town meeting has to do, uh, deal with, but, but uh, and maybe my recollection is wrong, but one deficiency I see I mean, regarding um, staff is paternity leave. I mean, I'd like to see us do uh, something about that. But once again, I think that's for um, the town meeting to take up. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Hellman. Thank you. Uh, thank you for stepping up. You have a very impressive resume. It's clear that you have a passion for the for the work you're doing. So we appreciate it and I wish you the best. 
Great. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Ms. Haas, for um, volunteering to do this. Um, <clears throat> definitely impressed with uh, a lot of your MCAT of Mass Commission Against Discrimination um, uh, experience that you've had in at least three of your different job roles, as well as also being on, and I assume, as you said, you'll continue on the Equal Employment Opportunity Advisory Committee. Um, I, I think that's a strength and something that we really need to build upon with the current committee um, that um, you'll be joining. Um, <clears throat> and as well as with your other, just as important role on the Equal Employment Opportunity Committee, um, <clears throat> whatever information or appropriate under the law, sort of, I know one of the things that you've highlighted that I'm definitely interested in is, you know, diversifying the workforce. Um, and I definitely, when appropriate, would be interested to see that you know, bottom up or top down. Um, I know it's kind of focused on projects, but um, that's just, just a particular interest of mine. It may come to fruition, it may not. So once again, thank you so much. You're, you're welcome. I, I will say that the town is, is certainly doing quite a bit to try to diversify its workforce, specifically through its applicant pool. And I know that, that the committee that I'm currently on is certainly doing a lot of that work. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to support uh, your, your nomination as well, Ms. Haas. And thank you for your willingness. I know you're going to be asked to, to go to work with the personnel board. I think you have a meeting in early December, so it's going to start right away. So I, I, um, I certainly appreciate your willingness to do this and, and the different perspective that you'll bring to the, uh, to, to the board. So on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmer? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? I will second the motion and the cute little doggy doggy. Great. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Great. Thank you and best of luck. Okay. Uh, item seven, uh, item eight is a board update on the status of planned improvements to Chestnut Street and Mystic Street. Adam Chapdelaine, Town Manager. Mr. Chapdelaine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I've also invited Mr. Rademacher, uh, DPW Director, to join us for this agenda item, if that's okay with the board, uh, just to be on hand to answer any questions the board might have. I, I wanted to take this opportunity to proactively provide the board with an update on the status of this project. I know the board is well aware that frustrations about the pace uh, or even lack thereof were expressed at the board's last meeting. And as we know, um, comments under open forum create a difficult situation for us to uh, really not be able to respond. So really responding tonight and providing an update, I thought was very important. So I'd, I'd like to just uh, provide a little bit of history and then talk about where I think things are headed. So to start, I, I know the board recalls that this matter was before the board at its meeting of June 21st, earlier this summer. And at that meeting, the board approved tax recommended safety improvements um, and the 5-0 vote was contingent upon appropriate reconciliation with the federal aid project of 1987. And again, as the board recalls, that is pursuant to a grant agreement that the town had with both the federal government and the state for that section of the road, which required any future changes to the road to be reviewed and approved by MassDOT. That was discussed that night at the hearing. Um, frankly, would have assumed at that point that it would be a formality, uh, but it was discussed that we would need to run those changes by, by MassDOT. Uh, we also talked that night about needing to identify funding for what could have, what ultimately will be a fairly good sized project to make all of the improvements to that roadway. Um, I'll start by saying, I think we have identified adequate funding within the town's mobility improvements line item within the capital budget to be able to make these improvements. Um, so I think, I think we're on a good track there. Um, so as we get closer and hopefully get closer to getting MassDOT approval, we should have the resources that we need from at least an expense point of view um, to get this done quickly uh, after getting MassDOT approval. But back to the timeline, um, so June 21st, the board approves the project. On July 7th, uh, the town council, Mr. Heim, 
uh, initiated contact with the state in regards to the grant agreement and tax recommendations. Uh, the next day, MassDOT uh, very quickly responded, requesting a copy of the plans that had been prepared by TAC and approved by the board. Um, on July 22nd, we formally provided those plans to MassDOT. Uh, on July 30th, at the request of MassDOT, uh, the town engineer, Wayne Schwinnard, provided more information to MassDOT uh, that they had been asking for uh, about in terms of the plans. During the period between July 30th and September, at uh, the end of September, the town engineer tells me that he made several phone calls to his contacts at the MassDOT district office, inquiring about the status of the, of the review of this project. On September 27th, town engineer uh, follows up via email with MassDOT. Uh, and on November 9th, frankly, quite disappointingly, the town engineer follows up um, with MassDOT once again, and MassDOT responds asking if we can resend the plans. Um, that, that's the upsetting part. Um, we do that immediately, and on November 16th, they respond saying that they will review and respond. During this intervening period, um, we have put up the no turn on red sign, which was actually part of the initial grant agreement, and we have replaced um, or changed out the existing parking signs per the TAC recommendations, which are not really directly pursuant to this grant agreement. So I I would express frustration that it's taken this long, uh, and I certainly understand the frustration expressed by residents. Um, but I think we're back on the radar of MassDOT. I know Representative Sean Garbley has had a conversation with me, and I believe with Mrs. Mahan as well, and he informed me and my conversation with him that he'd already called the state to ask for their expedited review of these materials. So as soon as we get that review, we will begin some of the short-term implementation. Of the, of the tax recommend, uh, recommended um, plan. Some of the longer term aspects will require the resurfacing of the roads. So we won't be able to do that until the next construction season. But as soon as we do, again, as soon as we get this review and approval from MassDOT, we will be, um, uh, be able to start putting some of the bollards in the road and creating a safer pedestrian environment as was recommended by TAC. So I guess with that, is there, Mike, is there anything you wanted to add beyond what I just shared with the board? No, I, I guess, except that we are also looking uh, to make that, there was a repair recommendation to the sidewalk at the entry of the municipal parking lot. And uh, we, we wanted to do that in conjunction with the road repaving, but we're gonna accelerate that as an asphalt repair, um, just to get a, a more smooth surface until we can do a final project. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chapterlain, and, and, and thank you, Mr. Rademacher. Um, I will now turn to the board for any questions or comments. Um, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to thank you and um, the town manager, I know, who have been working on this as recently, I believe, as last Tuesday or Wednesday. So um, I do appreciate um, following up on that, and I share your frustration of kind of being in the little hamster wheel going round and round and round. But um, I believe an end is in sight. And uh, one of the other things is um, I would ask either the chair and or the town manager um, to contact our colleagues, and this may have already been done, on the housing authority to see um, if there was anything planned. I know some people spoke to me about the ghost bike memoriam, if there was anything planned down there. Um, and I told them from the town side, I wasn't aware of anything, um, but it certainly could be considered, but I didn't want to sort of overstep bounds or recreate something that may are already be in the works. So if someone could just follow up with um, our counterparts uh, at the housing authority. And I have a quick question, if I could, Mr. Chair, and Mr. Chapterlain through you to our DPW director, Mr. Rademacher, um, just because, um, when we do hit the construction season and we can make some changes out there. I was just curious if um, any of those changes sort of included reconfiguring what, when you're on the snow fighter, you refer to that area as, as um, Thousand Islands, because if you're on one of those rigs, it's really tight. Um, do any of the design plans sort of uh, address that or will the sort of the island topography makeup still be the same? I think in conjunction with this 
proposal, we are also going to be looking at potential improvements to those uh, the islands you referenced. So we are actively seeking a consultant to to look at both projects together holistically and make sure we um, don't do anything that would prohibit improvements to the islands. Okay, thank you. And I think, Mr. Chair, where this is just an update from the town manager, there is no vote needed. That's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Thank, thank you, you, Mrs. Mahan. Um, Mr. Hurd. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you, Mr. Chaplain and Mr. Rodmarker for the update. Um, yeah, we've heard about this a lot recently. And, you know, I think it's just really communication issues on our end. Um, that and I so I do appreciate the update. I think with all work, we'd rather be able to just go out and approve it and do it. Um, and it's just not the case here. And when we have to go through a process, and we go through a process that doesn't involve the wonderful and expeditious people that work for the town of Arlington, it can get slower. So um, I think the frustrations that we've heard are reasonable, and they've been heard, they've landed, and you know we're going to stay in communication with our state representatives, with the state Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and with the residents of Arlington, with updates to make sure that this can get done as quickly as possible to implement the safety improvements that are needed in the stretch of the, the road here. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hey, so, um, the way the ball got dropped is is um. I mean, yes, frustrated. It's very odd, uh, and so, so um, a, I a, want to work on this I mean, with um, Rep. Garberly and folks that I know at MassDOT to find out why it happened this way. Because I mean, I think we need to understand why this happened, so as to try to put it in place, make sure that MassDOT puts into place I mean, some mechanism so it doesn't happen again. Because it's that lack of response I made mean, uh, for about three months. I Me, mean, where I mean, I've been that situation, you send an email. You don't want to bang too hard eh, because you don't want people to shut you down. Eh, but then you find out that eh, then they want you to send it again. It's like, it's just so odd, eh, you know? So so I'll see what I can do to find out. I mean, it's not like I can do more than anyone else, eh, but, but try, eh, so that'll be another for trying to get an explanation for this. So so um, thanks for the investigation, but more so thanks for the update. Eh, um, and as you said, I mean, we're in a situation where we often can't respond I mean, right away, but we, we do care, um, and so you're showing that. I mean, and, and as Mr. Greeley said, people do want to have a response, and we're giving them a response. It may not be what they wanted to hear, but it's an honest response. So, so thank you once again. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Town Manager and Mr. Uh, Lundermacher, um for the update for your responsiveness to the residents who have um, who've expressed their concern to us recently in their last meeting and, and over repeated emails. Um, you know, they have every right to to be frustrated just as we are, and it's clear that you are too. Um, and, you know, I appreciate the careful documentation of the efforts that we that we have been, you know, we have made recently and that we're doing everything we can. Um, so, yeah, I would just echo what Mr. Diggins says that I think that the folks who have been before us should be very confident that this is on our radar, that we care about this, uh, both as a policy board and also our town manager. And we will, uh, you know, all we can do is what we is what we have now, where we're at now and move forward. And that I, you know, I feel like we've done everything we can to, to be ready and to try to shake shake that loose uh, at MassDOT. And I hope that that is successful sooner rather than later. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Yeah, and I also wanna thank Mr. Chapdelaine for the update. We had talked about this before the meeting and, and um, he had laid out the steps that they, Tom had taken to seek the approval and, 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 and the frustration, particularly on November 9th, um, being asked to, to, to resubmit plans and thank Mr. Rademacher for, for being here tonight. And, and as we talked about, there are some projects that we were able to move forward on that we didn't need approval from the state. This one, we do need the approval. We understand the frustration um, that people have expressed and uh, we will double our efforts with the state through the town manager and, and um, working with Representative Garbally to, to, see, to see this through. So thank you for that update. And uh, with that, I will we'll move to the next agenda item, um, which is uh, open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation 
in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Before I open it up to, to hands, we will be taking comment on item nine, the discussion on 21 precincts. Um, so if you have something other than the precinct, the re-precincting discussion, now is the time to, to raise your hand if you wanna be heard. All right, there are two hands raised right now. Okay. Uh, first hand is Paul Schlickman. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Schlickman. Good evening, my friends on the select board. Um, you know, at the end of the year, we're going to celebrate the second anniversary of the death of my neighbor who was killed in that crosswalk. And th this feels, from my point of view, that this is more than a, a dropped ball. The person that the town charged with interfacing with the state adamantly is opposed to the mere existence of this crosswalk. And if you take a look at the TAC, uh, minutes and the recommendations to the select board. This is clear. I cannot, cannot express with more, more passion the fact that this state agreement popped up at the last minute and that the no turn on red sign was in the agreement and it took two months after the select board's vote to get that sign installed. And that it, it's, it's just not moving. And all of a sudden on November 9th, we've discovered that the state lost it and wants it resubmitted. When the person who's interacting the state is opposed to this plan, please, I hope that you have this on your agenda every meeting and update on what's happening because as a elected official in this town as well i want to know where to apply my political pressure and where to direct folks who are concerned about the safety of the people who cross the street next to my building trying to get to arlington center this is not something we can let slide this is not something we can just ignore for a few months and then call up the state at the end of construction season and say, gee, what happened to that? Because the next excuse in December is going to be, oh, well, there's snow and it's winter and we can't do anything to spring. Please push, push, push. Tell me what to do. Tell Representative Garbley what to do. Tell my neighbors what to do. What do we need to do to get this town to do something to make this happen rather than just point the fingers up to Appleton Street to District 4? Thank you. Mr. Schlickman, uh, Linda Verone is next. Is Correct. OK. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, good evening, Ms. Ferron. All right, I will try to be short and to the point. Um, yeah, hearing about these delays is frustrating. I wanna uh, second Mr. Schlickman's comments. Um, I have a quick question for Mr. Chapdelaine. I think I heard you say something about some no parking signs have been posted. Did I hear that correctly? 
I, Ms. Verona, I, it's a, on, on open forum that, that we don't have a, a Q and A. So oh, okay. if All I can right. have the and town I'll manager reach question. out to you I'll separately, my or you can and you can follow up at another time. I thought okay. I heard um, Mr. Chapdelaine say that there have been no parking signs posted. I'm not clear where they've been posted and when they were. If they're anywhere on Chestnut Street, people are ignoring them. So that means that parking enforcement needs to really get on those illegal park or park, parking people and let them know that this is no longer um, an available parking street parking place for them. That's the end of my comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, the next hand is Marcy Beck and uh, Ms. Joanne Preston is unable to raise her hand, but is asking to speak via the Q&A after Marcy Beck. Okay, all right. So we'll take um, Ms. Beck next. Hi. Good evening, Ms. Beck. Hi, thank you very much for allowing me to talk and thank you for the update. I appreciate um, your effort and uh, for giving us an update. And I just, um, I hate to be a broken record, but I just wanna ask that you please keep persisting, uh, keep on mass dot and um, just please get the changes going, the pedestrian safety changes going uh, and don't let this slip. I really appreciate it, thank you. Thank you very much. And I believe Ms. Preston is next. I believe that's the last individual for open forum. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Good evening, Ms. Preston. Joanne Preston, um, Mystic Lake Drive. I want to third what Paul said. Um, you can't imagine, uh, uh, it was wonderful for Marcy to come and speak yet again, the daughter of the woman who was killed on Chestnut Street, because among other things, the um, Transportation Advisory Committee said this street is too wide. It needs to have these pedestrian safety measures put in as soon as possible. From the very first, I've worked on this for almost two years, and from the very beginning, the town engineer um, was totally opposed to it. He said, we take the, the walkway away and they'll just have to cross the street, some other street. Um, it seems unbelievable to me that there's such a colossal problem with communicating between the town and MassDOT. I just can't believe it. I really don't, especially since we got such opposition. And the very person who was in charge of this was the very person who fought any kind of pedestrian safety measures for almost two years. I suggest you put somebody else in charge of getting in touch with Mass Dot. Um, I think you might find some improvement. And we still have a hundred residents in Chestnut Manor which is part of the Arlington Housing Authority, whose only way really to get to their church, to the stores, to the bus, to the parks, is to cross Chestnut Street, which TAC pronounced as being too dangerous. At the very beginning, when I talked to the chief of police, she said you would call the town manager and they would at least paint the crosswalk. So it might be more visible. As you re might remember, Mrs. DeRosa was killed crossing in the crosswalk by a car doing the speed limit. Um, so the, I, I wish you would think seriously about my suggestions, which is having another town official be responsible to get in touch with MassDOT, whatever it is which I also think is unbelievable, but that they, that, because we can no longer, it's been a total failure in terms of the town engineer being able to do this. And secondly, 
why not paint the crosswalk? You're redoing right next to it is Medford Street. They've done that. They've taken up the sidewalks. They've done everything there. All the construction equipment was right by Chestnut Street. So I would think a very simple thing to do would be to paint the sidewalk so it's a little bit more visible to oncoming traffic. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Preston. Okay, that concludes open forum for this evening. Um, before we go to the next item, it's 855. I don't know if members would care for a, a three to five minute break or if we wanna just go right into the next item. If anybody, um, anybody or, or, or go ahead. I'm fine with going ahead. If Ms. Mahan okay. wants to take a break, I'm fine with that too. But... Can I just, uh... Two to three minutes. I just want to run down and fill my water glass. Yes, that's fine. That okay? so, so we'll take a three minute break and um, that might slide to five minutes, but then we will then um, move on to our next item. I will uh, introduce the next item under traffic rules and orders, other business, discussion and vote, 21 precinct map, the re-precincting working group, um, Julie Brazil, town clerk. I believe would you like, with us would, tonight. Would you like me to... Uh, promote the three members of the working group or four yes okay. yeah that'd be great good evening miss brazil good evening to the board um when we get everyone here um we're gonna just do a very quick presentation um just to review um uh, just the sort of the whole process very quickly. Um, uh, so I'll go ahead and get the uh, slides going and uh, Jillian Harvey, our director of DEI will kick us off. Good evening, Ms. Harvey. Hi, hi everyone. <clears throat> so happening Monday night. <laughs> okay, um, that slides up. All right, I guess we'll get started. Thanks for letting us go. Um, so going over some re-precincting goals, we're fortunate enough to have um, right now more data, mapping tools, and resources available to us. So the working group felt confident and able to set more ambitious goals than in previous re-precincting efforts. Um, the information we have not only allows us to use the data in an advantage way, in an advantageous way, but it can also be shared with the public through our interactive maps. Um, in past processes, the degree of community input has been limited, to say the least, and this is the first time that an extensive effort to gather community input has been incorporated into this process. And so the working group intentionally prioritized the transparency of this process and access to the tools and resources for residents. Despite the burdens of the overall representing process, this is an opportunity enshrined in state law for municipalities to reflect on local concerns and create new precinct boundaries that take into consideration communities of interest. In simple terms, it's our responsibility and our duty to use the data that we have to determine which community members may be disadvantaged by the precinct boundaries and what new boundaries might be established. To that point, Arlington has adopted a very clear statement. Arlington values equity, diversity, and inclusion. We're committed to building a community where everyone is heard, respected, and protected. And at this time, I can tell you we're not living up to that commitment. We're just at the very beginning stages of committing to these values. And while the select board and town meeting have taken a number of votes in support of diversity, equity, inclusion efforts and initiatives, actions also need to be followed by these verbal commitments. Um, in the context of re-precincting, local elections need precincts to elect a representative town meeting whose purpose is to approve budgets, bylaws, and zoning bylaws. Thus, from an equity perspective, the debate is best served by having fair representation of not only racial makeup, but also renters, users of public transportation, and those who live in densely populated parcels. Our final recommended map takes the first step into using data, as we should, to inform the placement of the lines with a stated goal of increasing representation in some neighborhoods that are underrepresented now in conjunction with community input on natural neighborhood boundaries. So just gonna cover DEI within this process. 
Um, so committing to diversity, equity, and inclusion is not just a one-time statement. It's not a thing we just do. Um, we're not checking a box. It's a lifelong commitment that often requires difficult conversations and sometimes unpopular decisions to be made. My job here for this town and in this town is not to maintain the status quo. Um, it's to provide guidance and expertise in areas where improvements can and should be made. Um, and before I pass it to Julie, I do wanna just take a minute to revisit and frame for you the values that the town has committed to and to remind everyone of what the working group kept in the forefront of our mapping process over the last few months. So the first term, diversity, uh, we're at the beginning of this work. It's not the end goal. It's not diversification. It's not recruitment. It's actual culture. It's building empathy and making everyone feel seen. It is capturing data and asking who is here and who is not here, who is represented and who is missing from the decision-making table. Diversity goes hand in hand with belonging and the sense of belonging is lacking for a number of community members in town. Belonging is the culture that's created to have all people feel welcome across any and all differences. And it's about advocacy and being able to communicate and name when someone's not being included which then leads us into inclusion, which is participation. It's when diverse populations are actually involved in the decision-making process that impacts policies and practices. And inclusion takes, a place when, takes place when we shift, cent, shift to centering marginalized groups and focus on making sure that they're involved and have a seat at the table. And then lastly, there's equity. Um, and to be quite frank, where pretty far away from achieving that, um, not just here in Arlington, but across the country. Equity is the hardest part and every action and step we take should have the goal in mind of getting just a little bit closer to reaching equity. Um, and so what we're talking about when we say equity is collaboration and the ability for, again, all voices to inform how policies, practices and culture are shaped, not just those voices that are better off. It's the understanding that because of the history of systemic racism and marginalization in this country that different people need different things. And it also requires an understanding that structures and systems that are currently in place or deliberately not in place inhibit certain voices and certain people from participating in decision-making. So the shift to having to actually share decision-making power with others often feels like a loss of some sort um, that's normal. It's completely normal. <laughs> it's actually expected that with any change, community members are going to feel that they're losing something. Um, but work, what working towards equity requires is a divestment from privilege and a willingness to sit with a sense of loss and discomfort just for a little bit, because really you're not losing anything at all. You're actually just sharing and you're gaining more perspective and a wider range of input that allows all community members to be represented and have a sense of voice that is being heard and feel like they actually do belong at the decision-making table. And in this case, that, that table is town meeting. Um, so the working group has made decisions that are exhibited in our recommended map that allow for some and certainly not all barriers to come down for residents um, and to open up more opportunities for improved representation among precincts for, for residents. Uh, thank you, Jill, very much. I will quickly review the process and our recommendations. Um, so I, I won't belabor much of this. We're all familiar with the standards for rebalancing the population numbers and the need to protect minority voting rights. Compact and contiguous is specifically defined as without protruding fingers or long tails. We have some precincts that are rectilinear as opposed to square and they flow along Mass Ave, but that makes sense given our geography and they are all contiguous. Uh, finally, Jill just spoke to the problem of neighborhoods that lack full representation in town meeting because the precinct mixes a wide range of household characteristics and that risks diluting the proportion of households earning a lower income or households who rent in a precinct where higher income homeowners predominate. Our process, uh, once the select board narrowed the discussion to a 21 precinct model, and with the additional constraint of the house district line, the working group opted to focus on incremental changes that were in line with our equity goals, rather than attempting a complete redrawing of the map. The Mass Ave corridor, 
had been an initial focus on our earlier maps, so that was a starting place. And we retained the important general goal to create precincts that have similar demographic profiles internally, and demographic profiles are not limited to just race. Uh, in terms of equity outcomes, the changes on the recommended map create precincts along the Mass Ave corridor where there would be fewer than 12 incumbent town meeting members, which indicates those areas are underrepresented in town meeting now. Not running against incumbents reduces the barrier for residents who want to run for town meeting. And we don't discount the amount of work needed to support that outcome, nor can we guarantee it, but it is a step we can take to make space for new voices. Those precincts are part of the broader trend of higher concentrations of racial minorities along the Mass Ave corridor. So open town meeting seats in these precincts is also preferable from a racial equity standpoint. In other neighborhoods, we need to look for opportunities to draw precincts that are more similar internally across the range of demographic characteristics. And you know, we can't achieve all of the goals in every precinct given the constraints. Our recommendation to the select board is to make incremental changes now that move us toward the goals rather than maintaining the status quo and assuming that we could find a perfect map 10 years from now. So summing up uh, just a few of the details, our precinct eight and 10 use Gray Street as the dividing line, which conforms to the differences in the neighborhood characteristics. And there would be three openings for town meeting in precinct eight. Currently in precinct nine, the Webb Cowett neighborhood shares characteristics with precinct five and is already part of this Thompson School District. It is also separated from the proposed precinct nine by the natural geographic boundary of the Mount Pleasant Cemetery. Moving that neighborhood into precinct five, let us define precinct nine more clearly as a Mass Ave corridor precinct and precinct nine will have 10 incumbents. Precinct 17 is a Mass Ave corridor precinct now, and there would be one seat open in this precinct. Precincts 13 and 15 see modest increases in some racial minorities. On the current map, precincts 11 and 15 both include a range of household profiles by creating new precincts 11 and 13 that are both more similar internally, we leave precinct 15 with that higher pluralism and that reduces the number of precincts with blended profiles by one. And in each map, we have one contested town meeting race. A review of where finance committee members live on both maps shows the two maps have similar impacts. There are always a few members representing a precinct they don't live in. Uh, in both cases, we will have three members living in precinct five, and we can only allow for two. So only one of the two members living in precinct five uh, and serving a different precinct could be reappointed. Some members would represent different precincts uh, and they would live in different precincts, but the short answer is that 20 of the 21 current members could continue to serve. So tonight we take that penultimate step as you vote to approve a map. Adam Kurowski will then transmit the files for the map to the state and they will send us a package that you will need to review next week. And that final vote will approve the underlying list of census blocks and a written description of each boundary. The local election district review commission will review our map and materials and approve them for our use for the next 10 years. All right, that's our presentation. Um, so. so. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Brazil. Thank you, Ms. Harvey. I wanna also acknowledge Ms. Linema who's here tonight, Kelly Linema, and Mr. Karowski, the, uh, the four members of the working group. What I propose doing is um, starting with comments from members, then taking comments from the public and then um, coming back to the members. Um, and I will start this evening with Mr. Helmer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and thank you to, to the group for the presentation and for all your work. Um, I'd like to start with a question, Mr. Chair, if I could through you, perhaps to the town council, uh, just in response to some feedback. Um, and I 
also want to thank the public for communicating with us. We've heard, a, I've heard a diversity of views on these maps and I'm grateful for it. Uh, but one uh, point that has come up uh, quite a few times is, uh, could we do reprecincting uh, somewhere between now and 10 years from now, out of cycle of the decennial census? And uh, I wonder if the town council, through if the chair, if you approve, um, you know, could could address that. And I may have a follow up uh, question for the clerk after that. Uh, yes, uh, Attorney Hine. So uh, I'd like this answer to be a little bit uh, more simple than it is, but the, the shortest version is a yes, but. So the town cannot avail itself of this same process that we're in right now to accomplish reprecincting. What the town can do um, is it could engage in a process where reprecinct is accomplishing, accomplished by special legislation. Um, you wouldn't be submitting a map to the local election district review commission uh, and the secretary in quite the same way. Uh, you'd be submitting it uh, first uh, to town meeting the authorization to uh, get special legislation. And then you'd be submitting it to um, the legislature and the governor to get it approved. There's one really important uh, caveat on all that. You, you can't change the, especially in this cycle, because the legislature has already approved legislative districts. You cannot change the precincts for the purpose of voting in your state and federal elections. So uh, if you change the precinct in between now and the next decennial census, you'd essentially be developing two maps. You would be have a precinct map for local elections, and then you'd have a precinct map for state and federal elections. I know that I don't want to go on for too long uh, because there's some complicated reasons why this is the case that involves some conflicting laws and the Secretary of State's interpretation of Chapter 54. Sure. Uh, if folks want to talk about that, they can, but th that's the basic answer. It's possible, but it is complicated, and it comes with one uh, big important caveat. Thank, thank you. That, that's very helpful. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I could ask through you if the clerk has anything to add to that uh, on the more practical end of, of the question of, well, can we just do this anytime? You know, why couldn't we just do this in a year or two? Because I appreciate the intent of the people who are suggesting that we take more time. Certainly. Uh, Ms. Brazil? Sure. Thank you. Um, yes, um, it, it's hard to wrap my head around the logistics of having two different maps for two different elections. Um, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure the current state of the law would would help us make sense of that in terms of requirements for communicating um, with voters. Of, um, if your if your precinct changes um, and we have to notify you all the time of where your polling location is, um, that's chaos. And of course, we also organize the street list. Parts of the street list are published by by precinct. So um, I'm. I think trying to manage maps where we're flopping back and forth um, would be um, would be yeah. unmanageable. I don't know if you could manage that. Yeah, no, I think that, I think that's fair. Um, so that, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, so I want to offer just a few thoughts. You know, I, I want to hear from my colleagues, uh, and I want to hear from the public um, before I offer. Uh, I think in the second round, um, I think I'm prepared to make a motion and and uh, and have further discussion. But you know, just to frame this in my mind. Uh, I, along with my colleagues, have spent a lot of time thinking about this. Um, and I know that it has been an unusual process. There's been a lot of iterations. Um, it's been compressed and it's been late through factors beyond anyone in the town's control. Um, but I'm really comfortable with it. I, I'm com comfortable that the working group has done its job and presented us with two clearly different alternatives and left it to the people who decide, which is the board, what our policy objectives are. Uh, that's our job. And I think that they have served us well in giving us two contrasting views that I really believe reflect the contrasting points of view in the community. Um, even though these maps, these particular maps tonight are a couple of weeks old, we've had several weeks of conversation around uh, uh, various other kinds of maps. And they've really all along been two flavors. You know, there's been this sort of like do do, do the do the minimum, um, or really look at do do we want to make uh, changes? And so, uh, I you know I I want the public to know that at least this select board member feels confident that 
we understand what how residents feel about this. It doesn't make our decision any easier. Um, it's a tough decision, but I feel like for, for me, there has been enough process um, and for, for, to know where the public is. Um, and I think the public is, is divided and, that, and that's, that's healthy and that's normal. Um, a few points of confusion that, that I have resolved myself through my own continuing uh, conversation uh, with officials. And you know, some, I think some folks are under the impression that this would change school districts. Um, neither map does, has any effect on school districts at all. Um, earlier on, there was some concern that this would have a really, one map would have a bigger effect on the finance community membership than the other. And I think a couple of independent analyses have shown that that effect is very, very, very small. Um, so that I'm, I don't believe there's, there's a significant difference worth, worth um, swaying the decision about in that regard. Um, the town council has a memo that is attached to the agenda items that addresses another concern I've heard, which is that um, one of the maps might be in danger of being overturned by the local district, uh, election district review um, commission. Um, and you know, I, 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 we have a good town council. I trust his legal advice that, that we are really can proceed with either map according to our policy, policy goals um, without fear of, of one of those being overturned. Um, and you know, I think I'll stop there. Uh, for me, the bottom line is, uh, for the central question for me is, should are the changes that the recommended map is proposing likely to work? Are they likely to be effective between now and the next 10 years um, when we do this regular process? Will they make it easier for, for the makeup of town meeting to be to more closely resemble the diversity of the people who live here? And if we believe that they do, um, then I think that we, we should weigh the cost. And so those are the two decisions that we think we have to make. So I'll stop there. Um, I'll hold off on the rest of my thoughts and a potential motion until we have to hear more uh, from the public. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and I wanna thank um, everyone who's either come to a forum in person or not, or um, answered a questionnaire about this. And, um, I, a lot of the questions, queries that I have had, um, Mr. Helmuth, my colleague has already put out there. Um, and here's my um, sort of worry. <laughs> I worry in three steps. I worry three steps forward. Um, um, in in so having grown up in a family, we never owned a home. Um, we lived in Monotomy Manor. Um, I'm down there a lot. And precinct one is one of the um, precincts that you would hope to see even when I was growing up there, uh, more diversity, more representative of the area down there. Um, and here we are 45 years or 40 years, whatever later, and it's still um, prevalent in terms of um, I don't want to say the psyche, Ms. Harvey could probably uh, give me the more correct terms, but if you're a renter here in Arlington, um, whether you know, you're a minority ethnicity or your economic status puts you as a renter and or even more, uh, it seems in terms of my real life experience, which going down Monotony Manor seems to continue today, is that my only concern is if we create um, precincts and then the people that we're hoping will run actually do run. And, um, and I'm just putting this out there because, you know, to have the conversation and, you know, and sometimes it's uncomfortable and that's a good thing. We can listen and do better. But um, I think the town starting with myself, but others really needs to um, not only speak the words and the language to people who can barely afford to rent in Arlington, um, who live down in Monotomy Manor and perhaps other um, Arizona Terrace, other places like that, um, can, can not only speak to them and get an understanding across, but there's, there's a trust issue there. Um, I know when I lived in Monotomy Manor, 
you know, we had very limited resources, nothing from the town. And there were some opportunities available, not like that. Um, a, a couple from the state, but it's sort of, and it's sort of the psyche I see prevalent today that if you are a renter or you live in, you know, Monotony Manor or, or other private um, institutions like that, you generally have learned that, or you have the impression that you shouldn't ask for any more help, or maybe shouldn't ask for something that's available that's your fair share because something negative could come out of that, or um, uh, it, it's really not not going to happen for you. So I, I mean, I don't know if Ms. Harvey can speak to this. I don't know if, if I'm kind of hitting on, um, but 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 I'm just saying that here's my concern that we if we did not do the limited and then continue to study this in the year two or three and did the recommended, um, just by opening up that opportunity, there's already with a majority of people having lived it that really does, do not trust that they're wanted or will be accepted um, to that. I don't know if Ms. Harvey, maybe if you could just, if I could, Mr. Chair, through you, maybe just like a minute, slap back on that and maybe it's you can tell me i'm really far afield and i don't get it okay uh, go ahead miss harvey yeah um so what i think you're speaking to is the sense of internalized depression and that you are stuck in the bubble that people put you in um that's part of what we're trying to break so that sense of belonging that i was talking about i've been doing some small focus groups around town in the last few weeks and there is a significant lack of sense of belonging. And so opportunities like this, where folks who have never had the opportunity to be heard are able to, that's also on us to be able to provide them with the resources and the training and the guidance of how town government works, because a lot of people also don't know that, um, to make them feel welcome. Because a lot of folks will look at this process and say, I don't want in because it's not for me but that needs to change. So it's not gonna change if we don't try to make it happen. Um, so it's a matter of opening up doors, inviting people, making them feel like they do belong and that it's not for someone else to make choices for them, that they do belong at that decision-making table. So that's all internalized oppression because it's years of you know being told you're not, <laughs> you don't belong here, but in fact you do. Does that help to answer your question? No, no, it, it definitely does. Okay. Um, and um, I think um, not just this working group, but this board, now the boards and committees and commission, especially as hopefully um, COVID is sort of something that's in the back of our minds to be concerned about that. I think we need to do a lot more outreach on that because mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that um, I know Ms. Harvey and others have definitely been doing due diligence um, to reach out to those um, populations, but it, um, speaking for myself, it doesn't happen at a meeting. It really takes more time. And my biggest fear is that if we put something in place and we had all these empty town meeting member seats, because I, I don't see that we're there yet, I think. Um, but I, I'd like to also um, hear from my colleagues and, and take my experience and you know maybe it's a little better than it was when I was a little kid growing up as a renter and down at the manor um and I'm just overthinking it so thank you Mr. Chair thank you Mrs. Mahan uh Mr. Diggins thank you Mr. Chair and I'm going to keep it short for now I mean I'll have a lot to say um later on but it's going to come as no surprise to folks I mean as the 4-1 on the first vote be that I'm leaning very strongly you know, uh, in the direction of um, uh, re um, the recommended um, version, you know, and it's, you know, I'm not entrenched. I, mean, I have, I have taken votes you know, and regretted the votes. I mean, I mean, we'll probably hear about that when we do uh, the, the next hearing on um, the, um, the marijuana uh, shops, you know, but in this case, I mean, the last case being, I took that vote and I felt very good about it. And the more time went on, I felt even better about it, especially when I had to explain it to people. I mean, so that's where I am. And, uh, but I'll have a whole lot more to say about it when we come back. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Hurd. I envision, Mr. Diggins, that you might have some company on this one. 
Um, I, I want to thank the working group, our town clerk, Ms. Lima, Ms. Harvey, and Mr. Krawski for all the work. I said this at the last meeting that my head spins thinking about the amount of data that you have to go through in order to come up with these maps, both the limited change and the recommended change. And I, I, I don't think enough can be said for the work that you put into this and the thought that you all put into this. Um, I want to thank you all for meeting with me last week to ha have a little, have a more focused discussion to uh, answer some of the questions that, that uh, we had. And I, I think you all know, I came into that meeting and I opened it up by saying that I still am not convinced or I still am not 100% sure as to the rationale for it. And we had a good discussion for about why, where the rationale comes in. You know, we, we've had a lot of co people reach out to us about this and a lot of people are concerned because change is hard. And when significant changes come to something like our precincts, people always approach it with a great deal of skepticism. But I I think the explanations that I received and I think have been thrown out to a lot of the members of the public who have reached out to the working group were, pre were pretty persuasive to me. And Ms. Harvey, if you don't mind, if I could put you on the spot for a minute, we had, as part of that conversation, Ms. Harvey had a really honest and raw discussion about the current efforts in Arlington as far as diversity, equity, and inclusion, and particularly some of the conversations that she's had with people of color in town in her small focus groups as she referred to. And it reminded me that, you know, we can sit here as a board with, you know, we have a town with, in town management, we are mainly white individuals who sit here and repeatedly say how diversity, equity, inclusion is a goal in Arlington. And we take a lot of stock in the fact that Arlington is a very progressive town and our citizens are constantly supporting the goal of increasing diversity, equity, inclusion but we have to put words to action. And this type of change is something that puts us directly in line with that goal. And again, change is hard. And in this particular instance, it's even more difficult because if we adopt the recommended change, there are certain members of the of town meeting and, and uh, of the town that ha feel immediate impacts in they can characterize it as negative impacts that they have to rerun for town meeting. They might lose a spot in finance committee, they might lose a spot in town meeting, but we can't just for, because of the individual interests not move forward with the goal that's, that we've espoused over and over again to increase the, our efforts for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I think Ms. Harvey's discussion that I had with her was very persuasive that this is a real, it's, it's a small step. Nobody, I don't think anybody here is saying that this is automatically gonna change the makeup of town meeting, but it is a step in the right direction that sends a signal out to some of our underrepresented populations in town that we're serious about inviting them to the table to participate in town government. So that is certainly uh, in, I'll listen to the public and ob obviously we'll always take their comments to heart and use it in making our decision. But, you know, I think again, change is hard, um, but I think with the work that's been put into this and the efforts um, by the working group, I think the product that we are seeing is something that that is pushing us in the right direction as a town. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Yeah, and I also want to thank the the working group. Um, they have met with us. They've answered questions. They've had the public forums, and and we have to acknowledge we have received a lot of input from the public and and a, a lot of questions, a lot of concerns, and and we take those um, 
questions and comments very seriously as well. And before I open it up to the public, I do want to say a couple of additional things just on the limitations that the working group um, had to deal with here. And, and that had to do mainly with Representative Rogers' district. And, and so some people will look at these precincts and say, okay, I wish you would change something here or there. Um, and just remember that precincts two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12 are all in Representative Rogers' district. So to the extent that earlier on there was discussions about maybe going to either side of Mass Ave with a precinct, that's not possible. Um, it, it, it's certainly not possible from precinct 10 or well, precinct 14 downward. Um, and, that, and that's a real limitation in terms of the flexibility. The other thing is the census came back at 46,308 residents in Arlington. When you divide that by 21 precincts, that's 2205. 2205 is the target number for every precinct. With a 5% deviation either way, you have a range of 2095 to 2315. So as you look at some of these maps, and I know people have, re have reached out to us with concerns about, okay, why is this a certain shape or, or, or that? That's the limitation here uh, in terms of working with numbers. And um, I'm gonna save some of my comments for later after we hear from the public. Um, we did have a good discussion last week. I did have a good discussion last week with the working group. There's a couple of concerns I raised to them at that meeting. I'm gonna share them now and, and then hold off on specific comments later. And, and, and one of the concerns that, that, that I had a smaller one, but, but one of the limitations on a precinct is to avoid fingers or areas that extend. And, and I had a conversation with Ms. Brazil about um, when you look at the revised precinct 11 and where it interacts with precinct 13, the Hutchinson Road, Windmill Lane, um, that is a finger that extends up um, from, from precinct 11 on the edge of precinct 13. I think maybe later, Ms. Brazil, you, I think you told me you looked at that to see what type of change would, that that would be. Mr. Chapterlin, if you have that, um, I have a Hutchinson Ave, Windmill Lane, it's a small thing, but I just wanna bring that up and then one other more, um, a, a larger point. So here, here's precinct 11, the big open area is, is the Winchester Country Club. Um, yeah, that, that slide right there. Okay. So the area that you see going up Hutchinson Road from Morningside up to Oldham, that, that would be in precinct 11. It used to be in precinct 13. There's nobody living on the country club land. So that was a concern that, um, that I raised in terms of, is that something that uh, is so separate from the rest of the precinct that could cause difficulty? And um, let's hold off Ms. Brazil on a, on a, on a response for that. that. That was one area that I had. Just a comment um, on, we heard a lot from the neighborhood and the, the Webb Cowett neighborhood. And to me, keeping that neighborhood together whether it's in precinct five or precinct nine is paramount. Um, but one of the things that I don't want to call it a distortion of the um, of the precinct, but Mount Pleasant Cemetery, if if the precinct had been redrawn to include that portion of Mount Pleasant Cemetery on the Medford side, this is what the precinct would look like. There'd be no change in the population. So um, we received some emails whether this would still be a compact precinct or precinct nine, whether it would or it wouldn't. I don't know, Mr. Karowski, if, if you are limited in terms of how you draw it, but just visually, again, it's not a big substantive point, but if you look at precinct five this way, to me, Webb Cowett fits nicely, that neighborhood into precinct five. It is a Thompson School District. Um, I just wanted to show what that what that would look like, and and again geographically, my more major point is a, is a concern I had with precincts eight and ten, and and this is a concern both with the limited map and with the recommended map, and you, the concern I raised to the working group here is, um, and and it was a concern we received from a town meeting member, Miss Pyle, about school districts and. 
um, how things fall within the within other precincts and 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 with this precinct here. And precinct ten is mainly a bracket district. Precinct eight is mainly a bishop district. When we look at the working group's recommendations for precinct five, for example, on Webcowit, one of the reasons to include the Webcowit neighborhood in precinct five is because it's part of the Thompson district. Um, when we look at the changes for precincts 11, 13, and 15, one of the reasons cited was that the lines approximate the, um, the buffer zones and the districts for Stratton and Bishop. Uh, when I look at the recommended changes and I understand everything that was looked at, um, um, I, I see that going from Mass Ave to Route 2 is more of the flow for precincts eight and 10. And part of that is this three roads that go from Mass Ave to Route 2, Highland Ave, Jason Street essentially does where, where it ends, and, and Pleasant Street. And my concern here is not choosing one or the other, but it, it, to be honest, as I look at Precinct 8, and I don't know if this was looked at, um, when you look at the area in the lower right, when you go to the end of Jason Street, when you look at Pleasant View, and you look at some of the other streets towards the back end of Precinct 8, they feel like they belong in the Precinct 8 neighborhood to me and maybe some of the other areas as we look up at Mass Ave um, could have been looked at pre between Precincts 8 and 10. So I'm not particularly you know, feeling that I'm comfortable with the limited map or the recommended map for Precinct 8 or Precinct 10 because I, I, I think you know, maybe there's another way to look at this and, and Precinct 8 and 10 is unique. 16 and 18 is unique as well. Whereas no matter what happens here between the two precincts, you don't have to go to other precincts to make a change. The only other place that happens is with 16 and 18, where there's a couple of streets that were moved. And I believe the working group said that they could have chosen another block near the Dallin School and still been able to fit it in. So I wanna raise that as a concern, talk about it um, later on um, when we come back and, and perhaps right now is the best time to hear from the public and then come back to the members uh, on that. So, um, Mr. Chaplain, if there is a, um, if there are hands up, um, why don't we do that? Now, bear in mind, we've, we've heard from dozens, if uh, dozens of, of people, we have read the emails that people have sent in, we've taken the phone calls, and I certainly don't want to deprive anybody of the opportunity to be heard this evening. But if it is something that you've already presented to us, um, it's just in the interest of time, I just just ask that maybe you cite what you sent to us and try to um, try to try to move the, through this because it's quarter of ten and um, we've got a lot to do, but it's an important subject, so I don't want to deprive anybody the opportunity. So why don't why don't we go to the uh, to the list now? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first name is Annie Lacourt. Good, good evening, Ms. LaCourt. Good evening, Mr. DeCourcy. Um, are you able to hear me okay? I'm leaning into my mic. Yes, yeah, no, we can't hear you just fine. Great, I'm gonna take two sentences, Steve, to just say that the tax setting evening is always my favorite evening on Board of Selectmen. And you have no idea how much I'm gonna miss Bob. And I'll tell you that story offline sometime. Okay. Um, so I just want to say, having been to several of the forums and having talked to many people about this um, issue before you with reprecincting, that I support the map recommended by the reprecincting working group. I understand the concerns others have expressed about the disruptions some of this, some of us will experience if we adopt the recommended map. That said, we've been drawing precincts in Arlington for a couple of centuries. I doubt that there have always been 21 precincts or that there has never been a time when the boundaries changed substantially. There's nothing magic about the current status quo. It's just that when we went through this process in 1990, 2000 and 2010, the decades I know about because I was living here, not much changed. So there is now an assumption that minimal change is a goal. This year, we're looking at this process through an equity lens. We asked the reprecincting working group including our Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, our GIS Director and the Assistant Director of Planning to look at the data and assess whether we might increase equitable representation on issues of community concern 
by drawing the lines with that goal in mind. The result is the recommended map. I hear the concerns of those who are not sure that the equity gains we might achieve with the recommended map are worth the associated disruption. As an information systems professional myself, I believe that people are looking for a certainty that is not available. I work with nonprofits all the time that are struggling to find the metrics that will tell them if they have made progress on the issue they're trying to affect. Often they have to choose metrics, collect data, and see what the correlations are before they know if the data will really answer the questions they are trying to ask. Further, I can produce reports and visualizations for them and I can advise them on how to collect the data, but I cannot tell them what the data means because I'm not the expert on what they do, they are. I would suggest that we won't know if any map we adopt increases access to political power for those who are currently underrepresented until we try something different, something that disrupts the status quo. And I believe that the re-precincting working group members, in particular, the director of diversity, equity, and inclusion are the experts and the people best placed to understand what the data means and how to use it to achieve our goal of increased equity. Still, if we don't know for sure that we are looking at the right measures or if the changes will result in what we hope for, why should we do this? If we're committed to an equitable future for Arlington, then it needs to start now. We need to change the old assumption that we set this map based on the least possible change to the status quo and create a new tradition that says that looking at this through an equity lens is the standard process, not the exception. I understand that this will make some of us uncomfortable. I will need to run again for a town meeting seat, even though I ran last year. I will have a new group of constituents I will need to work, reach out to, and so I will have to work harder than I did last year. If we are committed to making decisions and setting policies with equity in mind, we need to be prepared for discomfort. We need to consider the larger picture and not just our own narrow interests. We need to take chances. We need to choose the recommended map. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. LaCourt. Uh, I believe next, is it Alan Linoff is next, Mr. Chaplain? Correct. Good evening, Mr. Linoff. Good evening. Uh, I'll try to be very brief. Um, I think that the um, members of the, the working group that spoke made a very good case for why the uh, recommended map is advantageous in terms of the potential for representation in Arlington. Uh, I, the, and the kind of cost that's been alluded to, certainly uh, town meeting members in some precincts are going to have more work to do in this coming election than they would have otherwise. They're going to have to reach out to uh, constituents, potential constituents that they haven't been in touch with before. And while I certainly have some sympathy for uh, the extra work involved, I think having those kinds of conversations is good for the town. It's good for the kind of representation that will come out of it. And I also recognize that some incumbents when the dust settles on those elections uh, will no longer be having an opportunity to serve in town meeting and some of those people have invested a lot of time and energy in, in a town meeting. But the objective of the re precincting is cannot be to protect the incumbents. It has to be to provide the best potential for representation for the town as a whole. And I think that the uh, recommended uh, precinct boundaries are the way that the uh, select board should go. And I encourage you to adopt that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Linoff. Next speaker is Carl Wagner. Unmute, start video. Good evening, Mr. Wagner. 
Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Thanks, I'm Carl Wagner, Edge Hill Road. Um, I live in Precinct 11. I'm not actually a town meeting member. Um, I want to thank the members of the, the working group and the new town clerk for uh, the process that they've been undertaking. And specifically, I'd like to thank you, the members of the select board, for all the work that you've been putting through in this. It, it's actually a very big deal. And as much as uh, the DEI coordinator spoke to the importance of uh, us improving our, our racial and other protected status um, membership and involvement in town meeting and in all aspects of town life, an independent review has shown that the limited map and the so-called recommended map are no different in what they would do to those ends. Furthermore, I'd like to point out that the word recommended is recommended by four people on that group, and uh, it would potentially change things for hundreds, if not thousands of people via their representatives at town meeting, because the recommended option is only recommended as opposed to limited because a limited option came in when citizens found out that they, there needed to be a plan B to the to the so-called recommended option. So I'd ask members of the select board to consider that what is being proposed by four people is going to cause a huge change if the recommended option goes through versus a lesser change. Now you might say, well, if, if we need to make this change and it made it a positive uh, effort, it made a positive goal in the uh, areas that have been discussed, then we should do it. But they're not going to make the changes that we're looking for as far as racial and other protected groups. So what are they going to do? They're going to cause uh, strange shapes to form in what otherwise was sort of neighborhood based precincts, and they're going to kick more town meeting members out. And that should be a real problem because we don't throw over we don't overthrow elections. We have to respect elections. Even though I'm not a town meeting member, I don't think somebody else should be kicked out so that I can have an easier chance to run for, for my precinct. And I attended the, the civic engagement forum on the 15th of November, a Monday ago, and uh, I was really shocked to hear members of the working group say that the goal of this action was actually to make space to get rid of town meeting members, that is, I'm parenthetically saying, to, put it, uh, uh, to make it easier for new people to get into town meeting. The problem is that the, the citizens of Arlington elected those town meeting members. The problem is that even though I'd like to get into town meeting, somebody got in ahead of me and they were elected. And it's wrong to have a larger uh, removal of those people than a smaller if we can do that. That's why we should go for the limited uh, choice. And I would point out to you that although I don't think your uh, citizen uh, commentary and, and correspondence received PDF file on your website is complete, all the members of the public who wrote in asked you to take the limited choice. I'd also point out that uh, in the so-called civic engagement forum, where less than 25 members of the public attended, including me, all the members of the public said, please go with the limited choice, except for one. So finally, I, I guess I have to use a phrase that they didn't like in the civic engagement forum, but it really could seem to the election board like this is gerrymandering, like we're changing districts when we're not going to be achieving anything more than we would in the so-called limited change if we went with recommended. We shouldn't do that, therefore. We should choose uh, to do limited changes when we're kicking out people who are elected duly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Wagner. And just one point on the correspondence that you made. There is additional correspondence that will be added to the record that did come in um, more recently. And, and Ms. Maher and I spoke about that earlier today. So that will be added. Um, okay. Um, who's next, Mr. Chapterlane? Paul Schlitzman. Good evening uh, thank, again, Mr. Schlickman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the uh, select board. Uh, I represent Precinct 9, which is a perfectly sized precinct, but it's surrounded by precincts that are out of compliance. Minimal change or preferred change doesn't impact me. No matter what you're doing, I'm going to have to run again next year. So if we're going to make changes, let's make sure the change is changing to do the right thing. Some history. Arlington was developed as a streetcar street suburb, and the pattern of development was from the streetcars along Massachusetts Avenue and Broadway, and it moved outward. The result is, is that there is a density of development along that central strip of town along the avenue and Broadway. Smaller lots, multi-unit housing centered along the avenue. 
this part of town has an urban feel it's, and more diverse neighborhoods. My 47 unit condo building is one block from the avenue, right in the center of town. It may not be majority minority now, but it's certain, if it isn't, it certainly is trending. And in my precinct, a low income senior in a housing authority building lost her bid for re-election because she could not afford a mailing to compete with more privileged candidates. Suburban development, larger lot sizes, single family homes were the last to be built and they're the farthest from the avenue. They are more wealthy, they're less diverse neighborhoods. Uh, that's just the pattern of our town. And if we take a look at precincts eight and 10 as the example, it is currently drawn with this north-south squiggle, an artificial boundary that is poorly defined and looks like a gerrymander. And in fact, if you don't know that neighborhood really, really well, you don't know where that boundary is. And most of us refer to it as eight and 10 because there's no really coherent knowledge of how that splits. But using Gray Street as a divider, this separates some of our highest value single family homes south of Gray Street from the more dense and diverse housing to the north. Drawing a north-south line through 8 to 10 devalues voters closer to the avenue the way it's done right now. Minimal change is another word for status quo. Minimum change preserves us as a bias for the more suburban neighborhoods. Minimal change does not advance the cause of equity. If you consider the current town meeting members and FinCom members in making the decision, it is the exact same thing as efforts to gerrymander state legislators and congressional districts in which office holders choose their voters. You know, if we have to make the changes, let's do the right thing. I support the clerk's goals. Her preferred map and the preferred map of this committee is the right thing to do. And I hope you have the courage to adopt it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schleckman. Next speaker is Lynn Bishop. Good evening, Ms. Bishop. Hi, Chairman, hi, hi board, hi working group. This is my first time at select board. Um, I will be very brief. Um, my name is Lynn Bishop. I live on Windmill Lane. I live on the Windmill Lane side that is currently in Precinct 13 and will continue to be in Precinct 13 in the recommended map, which is the map that I support. Even though I will need to run again and even though I just ran, I strongly support the values that are put forth in the recommended plan. I um, think that I moved to Arlington and I've lived in Arlington because of the way that we have celebrated diversity, equity, inclusion. And I think the recommended map goes a tiny bit towards those goals. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Bishop. Next on the list is Ian Goodsell. Good evening, Mr. Goodsell. Hey, how are you? Good, oh, thank good. You very Actually, much. It, it, one one question. I don't know if you're using your phone or or, but you're you're sideways right now on the, on on the screen. I don't know if you can tilt the. Oh. Uh, there <laughs> sorry we are. Perfect. <laughs> no, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you for letting me know. That was kind of that's kind of funny. Um, I I just want to say thanks for letting me talk here. I think the working group did a great job. Um, I I think it's a thankless job, and and uh, and it's going to make um some people mad. Uh, regardless of what what we end up having, um, I, I am a town meeting member. I'm in precinct eleven. Um, regardless of what ha which which option you take, I'm going I'm going to have to choose whether to run uh, run again um, if if uh, if I do. And um, if you look at the recommended changes map, I think it makes sense, um, especially like like district eleven. I mean precinct eleven. It, it looks like it's kind of lining it lining it lining it up more along the. Uh, the Bishop School District. It might even make myself a little bit easier to 
get reelected because I was actually uh, very friendly with some bishop families that were just over the line in, in uh, precinct 13. Um, the, the one thing I was just not clear about from the, the, the presentation is that um, I, like the, out of the, the uh, precincts that you're going to change in the recommended changes map, I think, I think there were 11 of them. Um, that represents about you know, a little bit over half the town, like maybe 24,000 people. And I'm wondering, um, in, in the, the limited changes map, you mentioned that uh, 11 census blocks will have their polling location changed. And with the recommended change map, I'm, I'm wondering, like, like it's got to be, like, I, I'm just not very clear uh, because it didn't say in the presentation, like how many, how, how many people you're expecting to have their polling location changed. Um, one, one of the things I, I, you know, one of the things I think that we should uh, consider is uh, the number of uh, the people that are participating in elections. Um, typically, in a uh, in, in an, an off presidential year, uh, it's it's very low to begin with, and I'm just really concerned that um, if we do make this uh, this quick change to the uh, with, without prepping the public about where their polling location is going to going to be changed to. Uh, to a significant amount of the town, that's going to de that's going to uh, decrease voting even th further. Uh, but again, um, it was a tough job, and I think you guys did uh, you, you did. I, I really uh, respect what you're trying to do. I think what you did made a whole heck of a lot of sense. Um, but I'm just concerned about um, about uh, the, the the change of the drastic change of polling locations for a majority of the town. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Goodsell. And just for for the public's benefit. Um, no matter what we decide here on the map, um, it, the select board will decide where the polling locations are. That's a job that we would have after the fact. And, and there, there are, Precinct 15 comes to mind that that would not be outside of um, its district at the, if, or its precinct or outside the location if, if it was adopted. So, but that is something, not really a discussion for tonight, but something for the select board to consider uh, later on down the road. Uh, okay, with that, Mr. Chaperlain, who is next? Next speaker is Alex Bagnell. Uh, good evening. Alex good evening, Bagnell. Mr. Bagnell. Good evening, Steve. Uh, Alex Bagnell, Wyman Street. Uh, when a town has a director of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and that director is an integral part of a process, that can have a significant effect on representation, we should believe her and take her recommendations. We should not put the discomfort of those firmly ensconced in the existing power structure over those recommendations. Uh, to choose the least change map sends a powerful message that while we can talk a good game about DEI, we don't have the courage to act and make real and perhaps uncomfortable change. I urge you to choose the working group's recommended reprecincting map. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bagnell. Next speaker is Elizabeth Pyle. Good evening, Ms. Pyle. Hi. Um, thanks very much for recognizing me tonight. And I'd like to thank um, Seligman DeCourcy for acknowledging the problems with precinct eight and 10, which is um, where I live and um, where I'm a town meeting member. And I, I wish that there could be a change with regard to those two precincts on the map and the way that the reprecincting working group is proposing to divide them because it really doesn't make a lot of sense to divide them north and south because it separates the school districts from the precincts. And living in this area, the natural flow is from Mass Ave up to Route 2, and it's not an east-west orientation. Um, I do support very much the idea of increasing uh, diversity on town meeting, but before we make major changes to the map, I'd like to know what outreach has been done for the apartment districts. And I think that outreach would be the way to go to encourage more people to run for town meeting from um, different income levels and to encourage minority populations to run for town meeting. Um, 
And I don't think that the recommended map is gonna do what we think it's going to without that outreach. And there's gonna be a lot of disruption as a byproduct. Um, I don't see incumbency in town meeting as being an impediment to new people coming in. I think that our town meeting elections are not contested because people don't want to be on town meeting because it's a big commitment. And I don't think incumbency is what's keeping people out. I think if we encourage people to run from different populations, we'll get different populations on town meeting. And um, where there are these problems that haven't had time to be fixed, like splitting eight and 10 um, horizontally rather than vertically or east-west rather than north-south, um, I just don't see that the benefits of the recommended map outweigh the drawbacks to community disruption. And I would urge you to vote for the limited map. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Pyle. Next speaker is Judith Garber. Good evening, Ms. Garber. Hi, uh, Judith Garber, Precinct 4. Um, I uh, would like to agree with a lot of what has been said by previous speakers in favor of the uh, recommended plan. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to have more uh, districts with more unified um, interests. And a lot of that means um, having the Mass Ave corridor and the other corridors more together. Um, having, you know, in the last couple of weeks, we had a housing production plan meeting with a lot of really great ambitious goals. And a lot of those goals are gonna need to happen through town meeting. And so in order for that to happen, we need all the voices to be represented in town meeting. Um, obviously this itself is not going to um, make the difference. It's like once it's one small change, but it, it's a lot, it's a logical change. I think it's the right thing to do. Um, I do wanna point out, you know, um, making the town meeting changes is gonna take a lot of community organizing. And there has been a lot of great work done over the past couple of years by some local community organizing groups. Um, I do really appreciate that this is a compromise between the previous um, plan, which required everybody to run, because I think the groups that have been working to get new folks interested in town meeting, they've been doing a lot of work on this and to throw everyone back in the pot would I think lose a lot of the progress that has been made in getting new voices to town meeting. So I do appreciate this compromise. I'm in favor of the recommended plan. Um, and thanks for uh, letting me speak. Have a great night. Thank you, Ms. Gabber, you, you as well. Uh, next name on the list is Don Seltzer. Good evening, Mr. Seltzer. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. I live in Precinct 8. The select board has before two maps. One proposes conservative changes, the other more sweeping changes, with the expectation that it will result in the election of more renters and fewer homeowners to town meeting. But to directly address Mr. Helmuth's question, is that the likely outcome? Suppose we were able to create a precinct in which renters predominated, and for good measure, we make it racially diverse, and we also make it the lowest household income precinct in town. As it turns out, we have already run this experiment for many years in precinct one. It has a renter majority, it has the lowest household income, and it is the most racially diverse population in town. The opportunity is already there for those residents. So how many renters and how many homeowners has it actually elected as its town meeting members? The answer is just one renter. All the others who have been elected are homeowners. This completely refutes their working group hypothesis. It won't achieve any equality equity goals and it's needlessly disruptive. It is time to move on to the other map for a less disruptive option. Let's look at the numbers for precincts eight and 10 where I live. We're being told that we do not elect enough town meeting members who live near Mass Ave, and we need to radically redraw the two precincts 
to create at least three openings by ousting three current town meeting members. They're all pretty good town meeting members. Uh, I don't agree with all of them, but they all work hard and I think that they represent different views. Precincts eight and 10 have 1,820 households total. In last year's town election, we had three active voters for every four households. Now, 117 of these households are located along Mass Ave in several large apartment buildings, garden apartments, and some smaller houses. Their turnout rate was a dismal one active voter for every five households. If you don't show up at the polls, you won't be represented regardless of how many precinct lines are redrawn. If you do not first serve as a volunteer on boards and committees, you won't create the resume or gather the name recognition by which most town meeting members are elected. Redrawing lines to deliberately create open seats by sweeping out current town meeting members is not the answer. The real problem to be addressed is how to get these underserved residents more involved and in actually participating in local government. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Seltzer. Next speaker is Elizabeth Trey. Good evening, Ms. Trey. Good evening, thank you uh, for hearing me this evening. I'd like to thank you, thank the representing working group for all the work that they've done. Um, I come to you, I've, I've really been conflicted about these final maps and I know that change is hard and I'm not afraid of change. I'm not afraid of knocking on doors in new neighborhoods or the idea that I will now be running against 14 incumbents um, if you choose the, the recommended map. I, I agree with Mr. Linov that that's actually healthy for a town. It's really healthy for town meeting members to have to knock on doors and have these conversations. And I, I deeply support and applaud the goals of ensuring fair representation and equity in our precincts. The status quo regarding DEI in our town uh, boards and committees and our town meeting should not be maintained. But I also feel like I'd like to comment that this process did not always feel right to me. It felt frantic, it was constantly shifting, it felt closed off and not open to outside input. It felt non-transparent um, and it, the claims weren't consistently supported by clearly accessible data. I felt like it was more of a tell me process than a show me process. And I think part of that was because the goals shifted several times. Um, first, it was to save money and make the clerk's office run more efficiently. Uh, plus, it was thought that it might be fun for everyone to run for town meeting um, to increase voter turnout. But when the cost savings were found to be minimal uh, and the fund was disputed, the goal was then redefined as equity. And uh, this idea of having fewer precincts um, that had larger, larger percentages of these communities of interest. But the data didn't really support that. So then it was also shifted to deciding where town members should live and where space should be made for new voices. With still no clearly accessible data showing that that one map achieved that over the other. And then this late breaking news feels sort of weird that there is an option, maybe not ideal, but another there is the possibility of redrawing the maps another year. But the goal of fair and equitable representation in town elections and government is an area that Arlington fights racism has been leading on in the last two years, and it is right. And the town needs to focus on this with direct action beyond your vote tonight. We all know that redrawing the precinct lines will not magically make town meeting more diverse. And therefore, no matter what your vote is tonight, I ask that you do not let it end tonight but that you uh, make sure that whatever new map you choose is accompanied by a clearly defined strategic plan as to how we get there, how the town will reach out to these residents from typically underrepresented communities and encourage them to run for office and how they will increase voter turnout in these specific communities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Dre. Next speaker is Lynette 
Culver House. And then after that, uh, Joanne Preston has messaged me that she would like to speak as well. Okay. And, I, and before, while we're waiting for Ms. Culverhouse, I want to thank the speakers for keeping it as close to three minutes as possible and uh, uh, recognizing that we have a lot of people tonight. Hi, uh, yes, thank you. Um, good evening, Ms. Culverhouse. Good evening, Lynette Culverhouse, Draper Avenue, Precinct 11. Um, I do want to um, acknowledge all the work that um, everyone has put into this, and I think that as select board members, I appreciate that you have read all the correspondence and all of the material and really done your work, so I, I do appreciate that. And I want to say that while I really applaud the goals, um, uh, nothing would delight me more than to know that if we redraw these maps, we will magically have um, some of our underrepresented community members want to run and be able to run for um, leadership in town, for town meeting and, and for other positions. But I'm not sure that I trust that's going to happen and I certainly not without a lot of support and help and outreach from the town. Um, this is not um, a, a magic, this is, I just don't see it as happening as magically as it's being presented. I wish it could, um, and I certainly support those goals, but I think that we historically have done a good job of saying the right things um, and then not necessarily doing the work that's necessary to make them happen. There's a lot of work that needs to be done um, to really engage um, a diversity of voices in town. And I hope that um, in your consideration here, uh, I'm not sure that there's much difference between the two maps where that's concerned. Um, so I think I would support the, uh, the, the, the limited change map. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm not supporting diversity in our, in our representation of our town. Um, and I hope that we can follow through after this is all over and do the work to really um, engage um, more diversity in, in town government. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Calvarhouse. Right, and I promoted Joanne Preston and that will be the last speaker. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Ms. Preston. Oh, thank you. Um, Joanne Preston, Mystic Lake Drive, town meeting member, Precinct 9, and a member of the Webb Cowett neighborhood. Um, I have two points. I'd like to make them brief in support of the limited change map. But first, I'd just like to say, I've spent my entire adult life working for social change. There's nothing that frightens me about it or makes me afraid. I want social change. It's the very reason I ran for the Arlington Housing Authority Board. So I think we should put that to rest. I think that's a very unfair criticism of people who support the limited change map. Now, um, I'd like to talk first about, um, I'm glad you've had these very sophisticated and deep conversations in town hall about increasing diversity in um, town government. I would like to suggest you would learn just as much by going to Monotomy Manor, where people are out working in their community gardens, on their watering the trees, and you will find what are the realities of that. Changing precinct lines will not lead to inclusion of diverse populations in town meeting. Um, that's all too facile and feel good, frankly, a way of thinking about it. Um, for the people in Monotomy Manor, who've been, I would say, fairly ignored in this, the step from them getting involved in town government is enormous. First of all, um, they have to become voters. Many of them 
are not citizens because they cannot afford the lawyers that they need to get them citizenship. Um, those that are have to be registered to vote. They need, um, uh, they offer transportation, childcare. You need to go and talk to them about what the issues are. None of them, because I was just down there, have ever heard about re-precincting. And I, if they do, the one person I talked to about it in depth was very surprised that that would lead to their civic engagement. Most of the diversity in Arlington is found in the housing authority. I think if you look even in your 2019 demographic data that you use to do these plans, that that's the truth. And those are the people, if you're interested in diversity in town government, that you need to engage. Moving around the precinct lines will not change that. In fact, your earlier recommended plan of 16 precincts would have um, diluted their voice because we've added many white neighborhoods to Monotomy Manor. Um, so- Excuse me, Ms. Preston, you, you're just over three minutes. So if you could uh, wrap it up, please. Well, yeah, yes, already. So I wanna talk about the Web Cowett neighborhood. Um, yeah, I, I, you're at 320. All right, I'll just, so, I'll just But we received your, your, gonna, your correspondence, uh, so I did. It does not follow easily into precinct five. It defies the state regulations by putting it on the other side of Medford Street. The cemetery is actually what brings people together because it's a wildlife place. It does not separate people. The recommended plan would make Precinct 9 be in three school districts, parts of it. Right. So that there's no- Thanks, Excuse me, Ms. Press. I'm gonna to have to cut you off because you're, you're getting up to four minutes. But again, we did receive your correspondence and we appreciate your yes, comments. I, I gave you all my Thank arguments you. about Web Cowett and yep. ignored. They, well, not, not that they were ignored, they, they were considered, but we, we make our own decisions and we take the input and then it's up to us to process you that and come to the best conclusion. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, right. That is gonna conclude the, right. the public comment piece and I will turn it back to the board and uh, I will return to Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, thank you to all who commented tonight. Um, and again, to those who wrote to us and called us, it was all uh, really beneficial. Um, I've given this a lot of thought. Um, and I, Mr. Chair, I want to make a motion that the select board accept the recommended map put forth by the precincting working group. And I want to talk, um, I hope, briefly about why. Because I think that the residents who contacted us deserve to know our thinking. Um, I think everyone agrees that these are not large changes. Uh, they are incremental, but I believe that they are the only practical chance we have to do incremental changes that could lead to better representation in town meeting, more fair representation for the next 10 years. I think a point that's been lost in a lot of this debate is that our experts, and, and you know, I really do believe that this is the team we would want, people with advanced degrees and expertise in urban planning, diversity and, and community engagement in GIS, um, and a town clerk who knows the town backward and forward, um, that they believe, as they've told me in my conversations, that over the next 10 years, the demographic trends will make the map, the recommended map, even more clearly um, favorable towards people who are less represented. And it is our responsibility to not make a map for today, but make a map for the best we can project where the town is going. Uh, and I think it's very persuasive that the Mass Ave area that, the, that these changes are built around um, are more likely to have people who are more racially diverse, economically diverse, and have a lot more in common with each other than they do people that get further away from Mass Ave in either direction. And this matters because town meaning makes decisions that affect all residents. I think both sides also agree that the recommended map is not going to instantly solve the problem. I would argue that 
doesn't mean we can't do both. I think there's a little bit of a false choice here that just because it's not perfect doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. I think it's very clear um, and, and I appreciate uh, some of the comments from people who have been working on diversity in town and our diversity director, that we have a lot of work to do to make people feel like they are welcome, that they belong. Um, and that work needs to be done no matter how we vote tonight. What I would like to do is, be, because I do believe the recommended map makes it easier, it adds something, that I wanna do all that work and I want to do something that makes it easier to have representation in town meeting that more, that better reflects the diversity of people who live here. I don't think that we should make change for change sake. A lot of folks wrote and, and said that and they're absolutely right. Um, I know that it's difficult looking at the data to, to, to understand and because, because of all the constraints that the chair and others have explained, you know, the, none of these precinct maps look perfect by all the demographic uh, criteria, but I am convinced that they do achieve the principal goal of, of reasonably grouping together people in a better way who are much more likely to have more in common. And I think they deserve a better chance to have a voice in town meeting. That means we have to work hard. We have to work hard no matter what vote we take, but I'd like to work hard with that assistance. I think that's the right thing for us to do if we are serious about looking at, living up, living up to our motto that we adopted, that we look through things with, with a lens of, of diversity and equity. Um, there are some things that I, don't, that I think that this, this map doesn't do. I don't think it targets specific town meeting members. I've made a point to, to not look where people live, where town meeting members live. I don't, you know, I think that there's maybe some misunderstanding that talking about trying to make space is the same as trying to target people for removal. And I think for me, it's creating an opportunity over time uh, for more people who have more in common in some of these areas of town to have, to have more people uh, similar to them in town meeting. And for me, that's, that's the end of the story. I think that's, uh, that's what it's about. We are used to the status quo, you know, and it seems normal to a lot of us that um, town meeting members are gonna be homeowners, live in single family homes who are older, who are more established. And it's very easy to feel like that's just how it works, but that's just how it works is how the status quo is perpetuated. Um, and I think that if we don't try, we know one thing, that nothing will change structurally that, that will try to change the status quo. I said in my earlier remarks that all that's fine, but it really depends on whether you believe that the recommender map will do something good and is worth the cost. I think that it does. I think it's pretty clear that it creates more precincts where there are uh, less dominated by single family homes. And by the way, I don't believe that this will necessarily lead to any specific outcome in the legislature. I don't, I don't have a view on that. I think the voters and town meeting members decide that. Um, it is purely for me a matter that whatever these folks have in common, I wanna make it easier for them to have more people who are like their neighborhood to be in town meeting. Um, and that's for me where it stops, far short of any sort of legislative or, or, or political um, agenda. The maps aren't perfect. It's hard to do this with 21 precincts, hard to do it with all the, with all the constraints we had. Um, I've spent a few hours with, with the team looking at data even that's not uh, on the maps. I am personally persuaded that, that they are meaningful, that they, that they do make sense. They are not perfect, they have problems, um, but I, don't, I would urge just to not let the perfect be the enemy of, of the good. Um, so I think I'll stop there um, and hear from the rest of my colleagues, uh, but I'm pleased to put the motion on the table and I look forward to hearing what my colleagues say. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. And I, I'm gonna go in the same order that I went in in the first round. So I will turn to Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to uh, second Mr. Helmuth's motion. Um, I will tell you, starting this meeting tonight, I had no idea which side of the issue I was going to um, come down on. Um, and I don't wanna in any way duplicate Mr. Helmut's remarks, just except to say, I agree with them. Um, and listening to the public speakers to me was a very 
not learning experience for myself, but um, I think what we've been doing for the past 20, 30 years hasn't worked. Um, I think we should try something different. You know, maybe that will be um, the sort of demonstration um, to these communities that we're trying to reach that um, the town, its town leaders, its community leaders um, are really committed to this, um, sort of recognizing up front, it may not produce any sub substantive change in the next year, three year, five year. Um, but I think if we keep putting and I don't mean to minimize the um, reprecincting working groups efforts, but I think if we keep taking little steps and little building blocks upon which we can build, I think that's the best chance for, like I said, myself coming from that world. Um, some of it, I, I thought about it was definitely self-imposed. Maybe that's sort of a uh, security, um, kickback that you have to the environment that you're, you're in. Um, but just thinking about it, if, if perhaps if we can put something in place that, you know, the next time we go through this in 10 years, um, this will be the building block. Um, and, and I really feel that um, the working group is committed to this, um, uh, especially I think, uh, Ms. Lanima is now our assistant planning director and is wearing 10,000 different hats. And our town clerk certainly um, has continued to put in a tremendous amount of work on the previous question and now the two different maps. And I think one of the things that really helps, and I mean no disrespect, is having our um, diversity, equity, inclusion um, director, uh, a woman of color. Um, because I know I've gone down there and I've said, you know, I came from here, um, but, you know, I am now a homeowner, which I wasn't before, and I may not be as, as approachable as I think I am, and certainly do not have the tools and the education in that field um, to speak, not just to Monogamy Manor, but to look at other places, whether it's apartment buildings or outlying um, districts on Mass Ave and the like, and I really, um, not to add to Ms. Harvey's plate platter, Thanksgiving, big, whatever. Um, I, I have a lot of faith in that. And uh, if we can just get even one person that um, is a person of color um, or socioeconomic repressed, anything like that, um, to me, it's a win. And I certainly think that this group of individuals um, can and will achieve that. And, go far beyond that. But I know it sounds like I'm being, you know, a cliche thing, but to me, even getting one person that, um, that learns about the process this way through the town and isn't asked, you know, that, that we're just saying, we want you to run. We're not telling you why to run. We're not telling you, how, you know, how you should vote, how you should not vote. Uh, to me, that's the purest way. Um, and I think it's something this town should be doing. So um, I'm happy to second Mr. Helmut's motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First one, um, quick question to um, the clerk through you. you know, and that is, um, Ms. Brazil, um, what would you tell the clerk in 2031? And what advice would you give that person? Um, to plan ahead um, by several years. I mean, I think we, we learned through this process that um, it, there's a, there are a lot of moving pieces. Um, and um, I think the very real um, impact on reducing the number of precincts from 21 to 16 on the finance committee um, did make that a really hard conversation for, uh, for the board. And I, I do understand that. Um, so, um, you know, planning ahead and, and having that conversation about re, um, rewriting the rules that govern the, uh, the town manager act that, that re-governs the finance committee so that, um, that's a smoother transition whenever Arlington is ready to consider 
Um, I'm sure in 10 years after we've all gotten very used to whatever changes in, in election law, um, then maybe reducing the number of precincts at that time will make more sense to people. Um, so that would, that's, I'm definitely leaving a time capsule in my office for a future clerk. Great, thanks. Yes, it is a matter how, how early we start, because one thing I was thinking is that we should start asking um, people who are running for select board in 2028, 20, 29 and 30, or maybe it's 29, 30 and 31, be what their positions are on various things that we are thinking about with respect to re-precincting. Um, so I have a bunch of things to say, but I'm gonna go fast because I don't wanna take much time. I mean, they're loosely organized, but I just really wanna give people a sense of how I think I mean, so that I am forward predictable to you all as we make more decisions. Um, so first off, I appreciate all the feedback that I got from everyone. I do read it, I mean, there's just not enough time for me to respond. So I'm sorry that I don't respond, I mean, but, but I do read. Um, Second is that I, I take a position in, uh, and it, let's say it's a hypothesis, me, but I always entertain the arguments for and against it. And that's how I read my emails in and listen to what people have to say. But, but I am the sort of person that is predisposed me, to try new things and to encourage people to develop bold ideas. Um, I don't count um, the number of emails that I get me, on a given topic be when it is my decision to make or this board's decision to make, I mean, it's not a referendum. I mean, and so if I get a hundred emails supporting a position, that isn't gonna sway me. It's really the argument, I mean, um, and the quality of the argument and how it weighs against the hypothesis that I have in mind. Uh, and um, so because I don't think that re-precincting, you know, is the sort of thing that we should put up to a vote, or, or I, let me rephrase that. It's not the sort of thing that I would put up to a, a popular vote. I mean, it is the sort of thing that we, you should vote on or think about when you're voting for a member of the select board or the clerk. And so that's how it fits in with the question that I asked the clerk earlier. I mean, when do we start? I mean, what will we do in the future? I mean, as I said in, her in my response to her, it's like, think about this when you're thinking about who's going to be on select board in 2029, 20, 30 and 31, because that is the time for a, the public to weigh in on this issue. So start asking people then, like, be what would you support in terms of uh, re-precincting? Now getting to re-precincting itself, be, there's a way to do this that is completely devoid of any social um, considerations. And one way would be to say, we're going to set our polling stations at, or, at certain locations, me that maybe, equal distant from each other or, or distant, yeah, equally distant from each other. I mean, and then draw the precincts me so that the distance to the poles was, were minimal. I mean, and so that would give you a completely agnostic a precinct map. Uh, but to the extent that we're going to impose or consider any social values, I mean, it could be loosely defined as, as gerrymandering. It, uh, and so the question is, I mean, what are we trying to achieve? I mean, and to the extent that it's a zero sum game, it, uh, um, and some people will gain an advantage, some people will lose. I mean, that's, for me, it's a zero sum game in the micro scale. I mean, in the macro scale, what we're really trying to do is develop a society, a, government, a governing structure I mean, that is more resilient. Um, and that resilience, I think, comes from being uh, more diverse and inclusive. It, and, and it may very well be that this will turn out not to be a good idea. It, uh, uh, but I think it's important that we, we try things I mean, and, and then assess them I mean, and make our decisions about how to move forward based on how, on the outcome of this. I mean, uh, what's really difficult in the situation is that it's hard to do a really good analysis because the N as in the number uh, precincts that we have to look at I mean, are really pretty small. I mean, and perhaps even the amount of time that we're going to be looking at things isn't enough time for us to really make uh, come to a firm conclusion. But I think we're aiming for the right thing. I mean, and and our, our goals, we're aiming for the right goals. I mean, and I just want to encourage us and support us I mean, in, in trying to achieve those goals. Because I think if we don't do anything, we really get into the habit of not doing anything. And that is not ever 
a recipe for change. Um, so just a few other tidbit thoughts. You know, I think the distribution within precincts outweigh neighborhoods. And perhaps for me, I, I think maybe the next time I wouldn't really focus on the notion of a neighborhood uh, uh, because I could imagine a situation where you could have a really cohesive neighborhood be, but the constitution of it is such that you really need to draw the line through it in order to get the diversity that you want or whatever, whatever composition in that precinct that you want in order to achieve a goal. And I'm fine with that because I think the neighborhood we will stay together. Uh, I, and, and regardless of the precinct line that is going through it, which is why I don't have a concern about me running the precinct line for eight and 10, me down Gray Street, because to the extent that you have a neighborhood based on people going up and down the street, really to the school districts, those neighborhoods are gonna to stay together. You know, um, and and uh, it may be advantageous to them to uh, be part of uh, different uh, precincts and have more people representing them. Uh, and, and their concerns. Uh, and to the extent that a precinct does become equivalent to a neighborhood, we, then we will have to get people uh, thinking about the notion that he, something's gonna change me in 10 years. I mean, it's very unlikely that we will get 10 years from now and not have at least two precincts me, that change. Me, and and, and uh, I have to say that I, um, I really, <laughs> I appreciate the notion of having everyone run um, at some point in time. And that was one of the reasons that I liked the, the 16 uh, precincts. And, um, and the, for me, the challenge was gonna be, how do we get it such that people have to run every 10 years? Because I was not gonna run for a town meeting member against four other incumbents. And it wasn't because I was afraid to um, run against incumbents. I just felt like, who am I? to challenge people who have been there uh, and want to do it again. And, uh, and, but if it was all 12 of us or 12 going for it, then I, I just felt more comfortable for, with, with that notion. And I can appreciate the kind of logic inconsistency in that, but nonetheless, I mean, that's how I, I felt. And, and, and so I would like for us to have some mechanism at, at, by which that can be kind of programmed in uh, and so uh, that's why the 16 precincts appealed to me. And that's why when this came up, I know that one of the conversations was that he will just open this up. I mean, and, and, and perhaps opening it up will make people much more engaged in the process. I don't know, uh, but I thought it was a, a, a good goal. And that's one of the reasons I, uh, I supported it. And I will just throw in a little um, um, uh, mentioned to Gordon Jameson and why I like me what we're doing with focusing on Mass Ave because I mean one of his ideas was 14 precincts meeting we would cross over Mass Ave pretty much going uh, all the way down Mass Ave I, I, and and I think that would hopefully make more people who are focused on Mass Ave and who utilize Mass Ave in a way that's different from people who live further from Mass Ave you know, um, have their interests better represented, regardless, I mean, of their um, ethnic group. Uh, and so um, in closing, I will just say, you know, um, let's keep the debate going, you know, uh, uh, and, and uh, if, if re-precincting is what gets people animated and, and want to think about uh, uh, town meeting um, more, you know, uh, then by all means, let's keep the debate going. There's the civic engagement group. We're always happy to talk about anything you want to talk about. So, so this does not have to be the discussion and I welcome more of it, but you know how I'm going. So that's it, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Thank you. Um, so I think I spoke before where I stand on this and my reasons for doing so, but just to reiterate that you know, we had a working group that was tasked with both the just practical matter of making our precincts conform with the law and the regulations and with the goal of increasing diversity, equity, inclusion. And I trust the work of the very qualified and competent professionals that we had doing that, that this recommended map is the map 
the best exemplifies those goals in compliance with the laws and the restrictions that they had. Um, so I will support the motion. Again, change is hard. And I think in the short term, some people are, are gonna have to rerun for town meeting, might lose their spots and that's unfortunate. I don't, would never wanna take participation away from anybody that wants to partic participate but I mean, if somebody's losing their spot, that means that somebody else is jumping into the process. And we always welcome, whether you're a town meeting member or not, we always welcome input at certainly our meetings and we have many town boards and openings for people to participate. If someone do does lose a spot and still wants to participate in the discussion, we, uh, we, we welcome that. So uh, again, I, I will support the motion. Um, you know, we've heard a lot about neighborhoods as both a goal of the working group and a argument against the recommended group. And I would just note that I think very few people in town, other than members of town meeting, identify their neighborhoods as their precincts. Um, you certainly don't have to stop being friends with people if they end up being in a, in a precinct across the street from you. Um, it wasn't until this process that I even realized that the my neighbors right across the street from me are in precinct 16 who knew i i always thought we were all in the same precinct but it turns out 50 feet from me there's somebody that's in a different precinct i still talk to them so i think you know again and i don't mean to make overly light of the subject but you, again th we have a product here that is really advancing a goal that we've established and we have to make sure as a town and town leaders that we're not just saying these are our goals we're supporting progress towards these goals so i will support the motion and i just want to thank everybody that's been involved in the process the working group um our town staff and all the members of the public that reached out to us and participated in the forums we can't make the decisions without hearing from both sides of the coin. And uh, we certainly have listened to all the comments that we've gotten. And I think seems to be coming to a consensus, but um, so I'm happy to support the motion. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Yeah, and, and I, I also, I'm gonna raise a couple of concerns I had, but overall, I support the recommended map. I, I, I had said I went through a detailed precinct by precinct uh, Q and A. The last meeting I had um, with with members of the working group, I did raise a question to Ms. Brazil about that that area up in Hutchinson. I would take it from the presentation tonight that you looked at it and determined that by changing that, um, it, it may have compromised an, a, a, another objective that you had in in the precinct. So I just want to confirm that in terms of. Um, would that make a difference or does, in your view, could it improve anything by including that uppermost area of Hutchinson and Windmill uh, in Precinct 13 or, or does the, um, the trade-off not worth it? Uh, no, we could, we could um, <laughs> Mr. Kurowski was able to um, move that block um, into um, 13 and move a couple uh, nearby blocks uh, from 13 into 11 to keep the population numbers balanced. It doesn't appear to have any other um, unanticipated um, impacts on finance committee. Um, so I'm happy to show the board that map. Um, you know, the presentation didn't focus on maps tonight. So I, I apologize for the miscommunication, uh, Mr. Yeah, Gorsi. no, no, no problem. And, 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 you know, it's late in the night and everything, but that was a concern I had just about mm -hmm. that that finger that, that we talked about because the country club is there and that that neighborhood seems to be on its own. Did you reach a conclusion? I mean, I, I know you did the exercise, but do you have a thought sure. of which one is better? Um, I don't think I have a I don't think I have a strong opinion. Um, the working group did not have time to uh, talk about it um, uh, at, at length, but um, it doesn't create any. Uh, it doesn't create any issues that um, take away from um, from the recommended uh, map and the and the goals and gains. Okay, all right. So so why don't why don't we do this? I mean, we've got to come back and for members, um, 
we're looking at their clock. It's 1050. We're going to get out of here by 11. But it, it's um, we have to come back and vote this a week from now. I'm going to post a meeting for next Monday. Um, Ms. Brazil, do you, you have to come back and vote again after you pick a map. The state has to know the map we want so that they can generate the appropriate paperwork to take the final formal vote. Okay, and the final formal vote is is to the LEDRC by, it, it's actually Saturday, December 4th, yes, so. which, because it's a Saturday, it'd be Monday, but I know you wanna get yep. things done by Friday. Okay, yep. all right, I don't wanna hold that up for further discussion. I, I What I would do for, for that one change, uh, why don't you circulate it if we, Think that it's that it's better. We'll move reconsideration after the fact. But um, I do want to say, do you of want all to look the, at it right now, it's up to you. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm just no. I don't think I do because I think okay. it's kind of eleven. I don't think the other members really want to look at it right now. But might might consider it if it's a better change after the fact. I do want to say I, I still remain concerned about precinct eight and 10, and I'm not supporting the limited map there. I, I think um, time has, has, has run out on us here, I think, but I, I think there may have been a way to, to reconsider things there a little bit in terms of the school districts and in terms of um, what we're doing on the backside of precinct eight. And I really think precinct eight and 10 is different than 12 and 14, 12 and 14, um, run along Gray Street, but because when they were first created, the Cutter School was in Precinct 14, the Brackett School was in Precinct 12. It, there are different considerations for Precinct 8 and 10. Um, and, and I think there may have been a way here to take a look at it. I understand the goals, but I, I honestly believe that Gray Street, while it's a good dividing line for 12 and 14, um, it's not the best dividing line for 8 and 10 um, with all the considerations. But one thing that was very important to me and, and being on the board is that we developed consensus. There clearly is a consensus here. I may have discussions with you um, between now and next week in terms of what would it look like and how would this balance the objectives. And the reason I, I bring it up, I'm not ready to do that now because I don't have the answer, but we do this once every 10 years. If it is a change that we discover, even if it's at the last minute, that still achieves objectives and, and might improve things. Um, I think it's worth doing it. But I, I, I think given where the other members are this evening, given where I feel in general about the work that you did with the other precincts and the trade-offs that you had to make and the fact that I support those, I am gonna go along with the other members uh, of the board and, and, and thank you for the work, but I do still wanna have that discussion. And um, if something comes out of it, We'll we'll address it, but I, I I think it's that's that's without having something specific and without seeing how this um, affects some of the other objectives that you had. I'm not prepared to to say that I'm against this. So I I will support this along with the other members and look forward to continued discussion before the deadline. So we will have a so the meeting so the vote you're looking for tonight is the vote on the map, and then we will have the final vote. Um, on November 29th, if necessary, we'll go over to December 1. I don't think it will be necessary though. So on a motion by Mr. Helmuth that was seconded by Mrs. Mahan for the recommended map, uh, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Okay, thank you for all your work. Thank you very much for your attention. Very thoughtful debate tonight. Thank you. So um, 1054, we're right on schedule. Um, and the next item is correspondence received. We have two items. And just bear with me a second. Okay, item 10 is a is a letter from Beth Locke, Executive Director of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce, Beautification of Business Districts in Town. Item 11 is traffic concerns on recently changed Appleton Street. Um, here, Lamecas, 6 Appleton Place. Um, Mr. Hurd. Mr. 
sorry about that. Uh, move receipt. Um, and I just would say that we did discuss at the parking advisory committee, which sometimes sounds a little bit narrow in its charge, but it deals with a lot of on the center stuff. We, we just discuss with representative of the, of the chamber some of the contents that are in Ms. Locke's letter there. So we town staff is working with the chamber to address uh, some of the concerns with DPW. So that's in the works. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, Mr. Diggins. I'll second that and I'll uh, second the receipt of them. You know, and I'm thinking that uh, the, the, the letter on Appleton, uh, what's, what, what are we doing with that? Because my recommendation would be to get that to TAC and get TAC to take that up, I mean, like right away, uh, unless the town manager has some other um, thoughts about that. I think with a slight change, I would suggest sending it to the design review committee. Oh, okay. But still have, have it taken up right away because I think, I mean, it's a, it's a it's, I think it needs attention quickly. Do you have a different assessment? Do you, Mr. Chair, do you have a different assessment of that, Mr. Chair? I mean, uh, Mr. Manager? I don't know. I, well, no, I think Mr. Uh, Mr. Chapter only said the design review committee. Yeah, no, and I, I mean, I agree that I don't know what this solution is, but I do think taking a quick look at it makes very good sense. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mr. Helmer. Um, yeah, happy to support that. So uh, do we need to ask Mr. Hurd if that's a friendly amendment to the motion? Yeah, I thought I saw him nodding his head when oh, Mr. Yeah, Diggins said fine. that, but yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. No comments. Okay. I always well, refer Mahoney. traffic matters to Mr. Chapdelaine to send them in the, to the appropriate place, but that's fine. Okay. Okay. Right, okay. And Mrs. Mahan. No comments. Thank you. Thank you. And I have no comments either. On a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmer? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Okay. New business. Uh, Attorney Heim? No new business. Mr. Chapdelaine? No new business. Okay. Uh, Mr. Helmuth? No new business. Okay. Mr. Diggins? Uh, when are we going to have we determined time for the meeting? Next week, um, I was thinking seven fifteen. Um, could we could we do seven? You know, because I, I have a meeting at seven forty five. Yeah, I, I just I know at least one of the members has an issue at seven. Okay, um, and okay. so we we've, we've kept it there at, okay. at, at that. I'm sorry, but that's kind of been a a standing time for us. I I didn't know you know that I know someone had a conflict with it, so I I will start at seven fifteen and stay as long as I can. Okay, thank you, Mr. Right. Diggins. Um, Mr. Hurd? Hoping 745 is not a conflict for that meeting. Uh, no new business. I'm saving all mine to a meeting that ends before 10. Okay, great. Um, I think you might, that might not be possible this year, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Anyway, Mrs. Mahan? I actually have two pieces of new business that I'm going to save, so I'm copying Mr. Hurd. Okay. Um, and I just want to wish everybody happy Thanksgiving. Uh, that's that's uh, my new business. Uh, and um, we will be back next Monday. So if we have a motion to adjourn. So to adjourn. Second, Mr. Hurd. Okay. okay, a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan, Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Really, yes. <laughs> Mr. DeCourt? Yes. Yeah, Ms. Hope. Okay. 1058. Have a good night. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye-bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.